19, 2018, and invite you to join with us in the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In case of fire, there are two ways to exit the chambers, to my left or your right, through the double doors, turn left, through the, again through the double doors, go down a flight of stairs, turn left, and outside of the building. Perhaps the best way and quickest would be to the rear of the chambers, the double doors, and to just down the stairs. And in either case, once you're outside of the building, get a safe distance away from the building. Second vice, please take the roll. <laughs> okay, Charles Duran. Here. Uh, Richard Zuzek, absent. Charles Ladd, here. Nicholas Lefakis. Here. Mary Scott, absent. Ken Nelson. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. And Guillermo Salazar, not here. Guillermo. <laughs> All of the Scruber and De Gray will be sitting in for the absent commissioners. Okay, we don't need this anymore. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, you do. Yeah. Roll call and all the other call. stuff, right? Uh, there are no uh, minutes, so we shall just continue on. Uh, at this point in the Planning and Zoning Commission welcomes comments, concerns, and opinions relating to planning and zoning in Enfield from anyone who's present, provided you may not discuss any matter of business at this time that is already elsewhere on this evening's agenda, any matter that's part of an open public hearing of the Commission, or any matter where a decision of the Commission may be pending. Anyone that would like to address the Commission under those conditions. <coughs> Anyone like to address the commission under those conditions? Last call to address the commission under those conditions. Hearing none, we shall move along. There are no bond releases. That mulch company never came back or decided they didn't want their bond. I know they asked for it ages ago. And we said we wanted to talk to them first because there was a problem with their, their uh, berm, I think. Yeah, they reached out again to Rick um, last week, and uh, I guess Rick said that he would work with them um, next week when he's back in the office. So they're going to be moving oh, forward. Oh, okay. In some so, uh, so it is active then. Good. Yep. Uh, that's a new planner deal with it. <laughs> well, yes, yeah, she will. Uh, old business public hearing, uh, 2915 137. One, I'm sorry, 137 Elm Street. Uh, this has been called and been advertised. It's uh, old business, so if you just take the roll, please. Okay. Uh, Charles Dern. Here. Charles Ladd here. Nick Lafakis. Here. Ken Nelson. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. And Sarah Gruber. Here. Okay, Commissioners, uh, Alternates Gru uh, Gru Gruber and uh, DeGray will be sitting in to the absent Commissioners. Is the applicant here? No. You come forward, sir, and uh, name and address. Uh, is there any new material with this that we don't have? Um, you received at your desks this evening the revised um, plan and the uh, revised narrative that the applicant provided. It was provided. received this evening? Well, I, I sent it in your email earlier in the week, and oh well, yeah, but tonight's tonight. So, uh, have a seat and explain what you're doing. We'll see how it goes. Sure. My name is Edwin Mustafa. I'm, I I reside in 203 King Road, Summers, Connecticut, and also the owner of the property on 137 Elm Street in Enfield. Yes, go ahead. Uh, I wasn't sure what I should. Everything, uh, right, right from the start, A okay. through Z. <laughs> well, the uh, the property on 137 Elm Street, um, I have that uh, for almost 12 years right now, and I'd like to see if I can have any utility out of it. Uh, to rent it is really 
hard to have a family to reside in that neighborhood because the fact is the traffic and uh, is not accessible uh, uh, as easy as uh, if it was just for a light use. Um, so I'm petitioning the uh, the uh, the commission to uh, to grant me a another options to see if I can use it as a, an office instead of a, or and or residential as well. Have you got a, uh, is it, did you ever submit a map that uh, is to scale and signed and so forth? Uh, the one we have is. The one I, I submitted is, I, I, the first one I did, but now I had the other one with the parking situation on it, and that was the. Uh, but nothing's to scale. Is the G? It's the Enfield. Uh, that was one of the, the things that I've been told to do is uh, to provide one with the Enfield GIS, I believe. And it's already included. Right, uh, but. You, we've also talked about the, oh, I don't know, let the, the driveway. Yes, sir. You're, and you're supposed to come in from the uh, Carroll Street. Well, what we did is there's a on on the uh, the new revised one. We're going to use the same driveway. The parking lot is going to be moved to the back, and it will, will be be able to. Uh, Park in and, and be able to exit access again from the same driveway. So you're going to use the Elm Street driveway. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair. Yes. The illustration on the desk looks like it's um, a driveway that runs Straight completely through. through the property and um, has um, well, a point of access on Carroll Street. That's why we don't have a scale. That's why I said we don't it, have it, a it, scale. The, uh, the people that bought the house down the street, I believe the, would not grant us to go through that area because you own that part of the parcel of land that has access to uh, Carroll Street. So we can't get through it. Okay. I have a question because sure. I was out there yesterday, and yep. this is the second house from St. James, and there was a street there, I can't remember the name of that street, and right. the town closed it off, so there Correct. was no access from the front of the house. You actually had to come through Carroll, go on to Carroll and go in that yeah, way. That's because not this. next door was the dentist. Correct. So those two houses have the remains of what used to be a street, yes. but you can't go out to Elm Street. From there, correct. From there, and if I remember, there wasn't a driveway f on Elm Street. Uh, I, I I, I, if you remember uh, when Jim Jewelers used to have their own uh, shop there before it went down, and the uh, Freshwater Boulevard that extended the area all the way out, and for that reason, this area was blocked off, and that road will be used in lieu of. Right, I understand yeah, why right. it was blocked off. It right. was a traffic issue and where the light was and the town came through and we, they redid that. But I'm saying is there is no access to the front of your property from Elm Street that I can remember seeing yesterday. Yeah, right. we have. So there is a front. There, there is. is an access, correct. Yes, this is how we get to the house. You Elm don't Street. use the, the no. back no. coming off of I didn't, Carroll? No. Because there was parking spaces already back there. And the, this is the dentist. No, yeah. the other side of the dentist. There is no. There's. No. The dentist there's owns the, the building. There's the. Um, if I may approach and I show you what I have here. Yeah, because now I'm confused. I'm no, which, this one. You, which you're saying this property about. map is not correct. So you're saying our property map is not correct. No, what, what I'm saying right here, this is 137. I'm where sorry. I am. This, this, this is 135 where the dentist is. This is the parking area where the dentist is, and this is the house that I own, and this is a driveway. On okay, so this house has a fence right here. Correct. 
Okay. Yes. All right. Then this map so is... So you, you got to talk to all seven of us. You can't... I understand. Well, then, but you're here. Yes, sir. Well, I'm yeah. saying, I, I, I asked if I would approach... Well, right. I don't so know. That's, I'm, okay. I, I still, apologize. That's why I said we need a scale map of the area uh, exactly showing where things are going to be. This GIS map is nice. It shows the plot, but doesn't show us what you're going to do. I'm not going to do anything. The house you're has stayed putting, the same. I'm not going to do anything. You're putting aside. in parking. No, I'm not. There is no. The parking already exists. The area already exists for the parking situation. It does. You, it's black topped. It's not a black top. No. I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, I, I, with the uh, things that were on our desk today, I have yeah. a quick question. It says sure. you plan. To, I know you're going to have offices. Sure. And that's a good use in that area of town. But it says your current plan is to start a solar energy and construction company. The major part of doing business will be at the locations where the installation and construction would be performed. Right. Okay. Construction is not allowed in that district. So where would you be keeping the equipment when you don't have a job? The, um, it's going to be all uh, basically a sub contract. So I would not have on any, per se, equipment. Couldn't put a display. The, the sales people that they're going to be working design. for me, they're going to be getting, getting the jobs, and we're going to bid it well, based on the fact that people will, can do it sub subcontract. Then you might want to say a solar energy office instead of solar energy and construction company. Well, because if we approve it, the next person who buys the property can have a construction company there. That's well, not the construction allowed. office, I think, is only an office overlay. You cannot use it for anything else. Right, but you're saying you have a construction company. It's going to be a part of the business, going to it's, be a construction part, it's phase of it. poor wording. I'm sure. suggesting that you just say a solar energy office. Okay. Instead of, Jen, is that a being um, proactive? Um, yeah, I mean, you, you would be approving it as a limited office um, anyway, which limits what he can do over there to only business offices. Um, <clears throat> so, but yeah, I mean, you can make it a condition of approval that the uh, narrative be amended. Thank you. Yes, go ahead, Kenny. Uh, I guess I would want to see a more detailed site plan. As far is. as, you know, what about handicap parking and stuff like that? There this is, is no an customers per se, they're going to be there. This is merely is going to be a clerical facility where I can store the records, have people to generate the uh, permits or being and, and doing, doing, the, doing the communications. But there is no customers will be on site. Right, but what if one of your employees is handicapped? Uh, well, if he's... I mean, an office space t does require uh, handicapped parking. And the problem is, is such a, a broad word, office space, Correct. If you leave tomorrow right. and the next business comes in and they have 10 employees and they do have people coming in and out. That's right. It's not, From it's, what I understand, they're going to have to come back again in order to yeah. be qualified for I an office space. Yeah. You know, the sketch I'm looking at, I can barely make out the existing driveway well, if I that is the, the town, driveway. So but know. it shows it goes right through the property, which it doesn't. Right, no. Right, so this is very inaccurate. Well, the last, the last Down. scale draw, the last drawing he did by here, or that gave us, was better than that, but it still wasn't accurate. So uh, you can put the two together, but could, you still could need. you could could I ask what's the inaccuracy on the other one that I provided, please? Well, uh, there's no, you have no directionals. It's not to scale, as far as I know. I would say that Elm Street is running up and down. Um, up and down is nice. Up is this way. Down is that way. I was going to say the north and, and south. An oh, arrow so pointing which way is north. I mean, I'm that's sure. that's one. There, there's no scale. There's no signature as who drew, drew it. It's, uh, it, it's not really an acceptable map. And then my last thing would be the police have um, some questions. Um, Elm Street is very busy, and this particular property does still go out onto Elm Street. And 
until they get their questions answered, I mean, we can't, I don't see how we can move forward without their opinion. How, how would the people live there if I have a family lives there? How would, what would be the restrictions to be? Well, that's what the police department's asking. I understand, but I mean, it's already been approved. If somebody there living there and a family of four, mm -hmm. they're going to be using the driveway to order to go on Elm Street. Are you going to Sir, you could ask the uh, police department that, but usually what they're interested in is we were, we had no knowledge and still don't really of what type of office you're going to, to operate. You say it's a construction, uh, solar panels. Uh, if you have to understand zoning, we allow it, as was said, for one, set it up for one type of item we can't categorize or, or separate it just for you because anybody's going to have to go in there and use it you can make it uh, how long you may not stay there that long right and 135 actually exits onto carroll street so they have to go through the traffic light and 137 you're so close to the traffic light uh, i can see the police department's concern i mean they may simply just say Okay, we're good with it, but we want you also to put a driveway out onto Carroll Street and close off the Elm Street to alleviate some of the congestion right there. And, you know, if they recommend that and you're good with it, I mean, I don't see an issue with a small office there. But as a contractor, dealing with general contractors and your subs, the subcontractors are going to be coming in and out of your facility with problems and stuff like that, picking up material that got shipped in overnight. I, I believe the, the, the thrust on the main reason why that location instead of, I mean, when you have a cell phone today and you have a computer, you don't need to be anywhere. You know, you know, this is business being conducted over the phone. I need the sign in order to to drive the business mm -hmm. and this is the location this is the only thing that i'm looking for nobody right. I, I understand it's a great location right. but like i said without the comments from the police department because me right off the bat right i would recommend put the driveway going out onto carroll so you still get the exposure of elm street and the signage that you're looking for mm -hmm. but it doesn't impact any traffic on elm street at that busy intersection as it is you're diverting everybody to st james and there's a light there already. I can't do that because the owner of the lot on Carroll Street. Sir, this is why we ask for a plot plan drawn, right surveyed, there. so that we have it. Yeah, you gave us this. this. I get it from the town. I mean, isn't the town word is not good? Enough? <sighs> this is just a GIS, right? Yes, sir. What's, what's on this? It side? shows us nothing except a square. It doesn't show us your driveway. It doesn't show the person next door. In fact, one, if one, who's, I don't know who owns the property. Does 139 own the property? 139 is still there, yes. That straight line shows it going right back straight to Carroll yeah. Street. It doesn't show that his property line goes over and back of you. No. I think two, I think two Carroll Street. Two Carroll. Because there's this like little triangle there. Where two, little... Yeah, two Carroll Street sort of goes over now, does it, do you happen to know? But the, the, the line isn't even there. That's what I'm saying. You need an accurate line. We it's don't there. know what he's talking about. I see, I'm, yeah. right I see the line here. I can pass this. See right where that, that blue is? That's where the, it looks the like 2 Carroll is Street there. is yeah. right behind you on another so lot. So you drew that in there, right? No, yeah. no, that's, that's there. I'm just there highlighting it with my pen. Too, now, is there, is there a portion of your parcel that's not abutted by that, that yeah, parcel side. behind you, like the other side? In other words, could you extend your parking potentially? I can't do that because they have the cable company and the phone company have their box there in this area. See, that's another thing that would be shown on a plot plan. But see, I'm showing the driveway go right through that. Yeah, well, he that drew too. it in, yeah, right. but that and, doesn't work. And the town owns the first five or seven feet of your yard anyway, so that particular piece like um, uh, the chairman's saying is, you know, is that town property? Could you ask the town that you can cross that to put, I mean, for a safety reason and stuff like that. 
um, I think the town would be open to that. But again, this all depends on what the police department says. They may not have a problem with you going out on the Elm Street, but the questions they're asking, it looks like they do have concerns. I'm not going to say they're problems yet, but so until I get those answers and maybe a more accurate site plan, uh, I'm not ready to move on this. The other, the other thing, the interior of the building, you're not going to touch? No. So... Because most of those other interiors have been changed to to different to the office spaces or for whatever use. There is no there is no need for it. Yes. No, I, I have a question. I guess sure. my initial understanding of the application was you wanted to just get it zoned and then you could rent it out to someone else. And then tonight we learned you might use it yourself Correct. as an office. Correct. Can you explain which one that is? It's gonna be mine. Okay, will be yours. Yeah. And will you have employees? Uh, most likely, no. Okay. It says two on her. It just says maximum up to two or more, no more than two people will be there. So you would you would take the whole building for your needs, and there wouldn't be another office that you rent out. Correct. Where is your office at present, Rami? Where, where at present is your office now? In my house. Oh, okay. But you, there's no, no people come in and discuss it with you? You do your selling of, of your solar panels by phone? Um, it be a company, the startup, yes. Hasn't been. It doesn't have a company. Has been in fruition. It, it will be. But how will you reach customers? So how are you planning uh, on uh, your customers? Um, the sign on the front lawn probably be one of them, uh, and door to door, basically. The salespeople is going to be knocking on doors and leaving leaving some. And I believe that's what uh, the commissioner asked you: was employees. Aren't your salesmen going to be employees? It's going to be in the field. It's going to be like it's not going to be you know maximum will be two people be doing that. They never come to you? Yeah. And for a paycheck. They would have to come in to pick up the uh, things that they're handing out, right? It's going to be mailed to them. Huh. You're, you're never going to see your salesman? I don't, I, that, Dunkin' don't. Donuts, I think, is a great place to sit down and have a cup of coffee and discuss what you need to do. Uh, I mean, there are, nobody's going to the office today. I mean, look at the insurance companies today, they, they don't have any employees in their buildings anymore. Oh, that's not true. <laughs> I mean, I was going to say compared to like what I, I used to have. That. <laughs> I mean, everybody works from home right now. I mean, can you understand we're, we're having a little trouble? It's right on that busy intersection. Sure. And we're trying to figure out what the business is. Because the, have you received the police comments? No. Okay. Do you want me to read you what we received? Have you? Okay. The police said, "What could type of office?" Notes. What? We could give them a copy. Jen, we could give you a copy. Have a copy. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll address it. If you don't mind. John, he's had time to go over these. Police and fire department. Copies of the. Yeah, department. we went over it, and I sent an email. Well, out, I, I get the email with the, I mean, what needs to be done, which is part of it. What kind of, what kind of business it is, which I address it, on, the narrative, the. Uh, that I already submitted. Did you make sure that the police questions were answered and given to the police in the fire? I haven't given anything to anybody. Mm. I, okay. I was instructed to come down here to, for the hearing. This okay. He, he didn't have an ART? No. Uh, no, we send everything out electronically and then the, um, the That's the trouble with not having back. an ART. People don't get a chance, uh, even to small things. People don't have a chance to have the other divisions tell them because for us to sit here and, and well, I'm not sure that there is, at things, it doesn't it, seem like there's a real vision here. I mean, it's it's all hypothetical at mm -hmm. this point. It's, it's an office. It's an office. It's, it's, the house is located in an office overlay zoning, and I'd like to have an office. It'd be that's true, zoning. but we have to know what kind of an office because we, if you're going into solar energy, Yes, sir. Eventually, and you said you're going to go door to door. 
Who's doing the installation? Subcontractor, sir. And how are they going to get in touch with you, too? Your phone? By the phone. Meeting them right on the, on, on the site. I mean, there is no reason for anybody to go to the office. For what reason? I have no idea. That sounds like a strange, strange business to me. This it's just kind of, kind of hard because you're asking us. Office. You're asking us for an office, yeah. and Correct. you're saying you need an office. Correct. And then you're saying nobody's going to go to the office. The office will be. I think, as I stated before, is that I really need to have the sign to be there to start with, and I'm going to have to store all my records in there. If somebody's going to be doing there, it's going to be a computer in order to generate some of the permits or, or any any communication as such. It sounds to me like he just wants to sign. Yeah. He's running the business out of his house now or startup out of his house. It is a great location for a sign. But, I mean, if he's going to just store records there, I don't know that I would designate it an office. Um, you see, the, the, the main part is once we say it's an office, we have to designate what kind of an office. Like it was mentioned down here, construction company. You know... If we put a construction company in there, what what that would mean with that area? Well, look at no the idea. insurance right next door. Yep. She did a tremendous amount of work to that house to make it conforming yep. Yep. to an office. He said the doctor's right next but door. But he's not doing that, Ken. But I, I, I think I, the, the, the way that you have insurance companies that will draw the public to him, you have the dentist where by say that people will go there. I don't have that needs for that. <clears throat> the office is just a focal area. We understand area. that, but hopefully you're going to expand and you're going to Well, if I expand, a, a really I'll have my own building somewhere else. I would not expand. I know, I but what we have to do is plan. It to, if we're changing a zone, we have to plan ahead of what possibly could go in there other than you. This location will not sustain any expansion. I understand that. No, but it might have people that are going to go in there that would have, like you say, you're not going to have anybody in there except yourself. Then the stipulation maybe for the approval is that based on that, you just make it conditional on if somebody else will take over the space has to come back again in front of you and give you their own vision for what they want to do. Once Sir, you change the zone, you can't do excuse it. Excuse me. Yeah. Once well, we change it, he thinks it's, it's always going to that. stay yeah. that way forever. Whether you stay in that building or you decide you're going to expand, you're going to sell it, the next person that wants that building, it's zoned for that particular type of office. With the so, preconditions. And you, we can't just precondition can't precondition zoning. Zoning. <laughs> It yeah, but this not, I'm not asking for changing zoning. This zoning already existed. This area already an office overlay. Well, I'm not asking for changing of zoning. Is there a turnaround in the driveway? Yes. It doesn't show it on your site plan. Well, well we have no site plan. I mean, it's 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 on the grass, to be honest with you, from the back. Have, now, I understand you've been commu uh, communicating from Commute. Florida. <laughs> Yes, sir. Up to here? Yes, sir. Have you ever had a chance to come in and sit down with staff? Yeah, we worked together in the office um, after the, uh, not the last meeting, but the meeting prior. And um, I discussed everything that you had been looking for at that meeting. And he uh, provided a an extension to the time to close the public hearing. And we received um, the new materials this week. So... But he hasn't had an ART or a chance to sit down with all the staff around. Uh, no, not uh, not in the not in the room. The materials that we received were distributed to all departments, but electronically, and they provide they reviewed it and provided comments to us, which we passed along. <laughs> well, I. I I'm one, of, I'm one of many. I, I would deny it without prejudice, but I, that's not up to me. It's the rest of you. I'll have to open it to the rest of the people. Uh, actually, I wanted to ask. Yes, uh, the map is still not clear. Are you 
sharing that driveway with 139? No. Is that his driveway? 139? Yes. No, they have a, their own driveway. They have another one over there. Yes, sir. Well, you said you somebody else was using it, so you couldn't. No, no, I'm talking about on Carroll Street. Oh, number two, Carroll. Yes. Okay. But if your driveway goes out through that now. Yes. It's got to be your own, driveway. This, this is his property. My my driveway on Elm Street. This is Elm not Street. on this map. It shows both. No. We're kill, well, let's open it to the public. We're killing a, I was going to say, killing a dead horse. Well, I'm not because, clear what he's got here. I, well, that's why I'm saying we need a site plan that is accurate, which we do not have. That's not a site plan. That's just a GIS box. I have provided what has been asked me to provide. So if you want a site plan, I can. Well, that's what we do. I can do that. That's what we, I had asked for I before, an accurate one have. from the first map that you hand drew without no, any arrows or any width. We didn't know how wide the driveway was to handle whatever you may have. Uh, this, I believe I, mean, I, 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 I It's a really an incomplete. Site plan. Site plan. I wouldn't have accepted it up the stairs. I don't know why it was, but it's here. Well, why don't we just open it to the public? I will. Okay. I know why it was. If you will, sir, and have the public come up. Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Last call to speak in favor or against the application. Hearing none, Jan. Jan. <laughs> Um, so, uh, I mean, it's, it's up to you if you want to um, continue this until you get a site plan or deny it without prejudice and they can come back. Um, he well, did he doesn't provide really have the time. Uh, yeah. When you say the time, what the time that required? The extension that you provided was until August 16th. The commission doesn't normally meet in August um, unless they wanted to schedule a special meeting. But well, the problem, with, sir, to understand if if a special meeting could be or is arranged, I don't know because it's vacation time. Who would show up? We have a seven-member commission, as you see, and, right. I, and we have what three absent tonight. So uh, the problem is it would take four to pass it. And if we end up without four people, you're not even going to hear it. Well, I think there'll be a reason enough to delay it because you don't have a full. Well, we can't yeah. delay it until your time is run out. Mm. And the understanding, if, we, if it's denied without prejudice, it means you can file immediately within a year. If we just deny it, you can't file for a year. Okay. I. Yeah. Yeah. Also, without said, prejudice, I, is not another charge for the next no, time. Around. Well, hopefully there isn't a charge. I don't know about no. the finances either. I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. I couldn't hear what you said. There, uh, somebody said that it, there wasn't a charge with it. I don't know anything about charges. If we well, do withdraw without pre prejudice, does he, does he have to uh, another fee? I don't know. Still have to re-advertise it. Yeah. Yeah, I have to be re-advertised, so there is a fee. Yep. Okay. But it's better than that you have to wait a year. But we do need accurate site plans, as you said, and we want, I would like to see a real exactly what it is you're going to do interior i can't believe you're going to leave the bedroom and the kitchen and everything just as is and you're going to set a, a desk or maybe do your work on the countertop in the kitchen i don't know there is no um show us how you're going to use the inside of the house right by a drawing okay anything else you please have such i don't know how it's going to go but the, Right. Uh, well, if we come in for a special meeting next month, I want to make sure we have a real site well, plan. Well, that's, uh, yeah, you'd have to have stuff already, too. Uh, I, I will. But, I, I will. But if you do I a special meeting have... and we don't have it, 
that's a waste of our time. Well, she wouldn't call a special yes. meeting if I she doesn't have it. Call it. No, oh. you, you do, yeah. Right, but if she says to you, I don't have a real site plan, there's no special meeting. Yeah, but uh, no. He yeah. can come back in September. But he could right. come back in September. He could. Yeah. Well, that's well, right now it's closed public hearing by August 16. Right. Yeah, that's right. You'd that's have the problem. Have, you'd have to have a special yeah. meeting. Yeah. You'd no, have to you'd have it. to deny it without prejudice right, well, and let him come in I September. Have a special meeting. He doesn't want to be denied. He wants to try to get in for August before August 16th, well, which is fine if he gets the site plan. Then I but hate to be a, a bad uh, person, but staff worked with him. That's what the, that's what you're saying, right? You worked with him and about what he needed. Yeah, we discussed it in the office. Okay, so it's not like he came into this blind. Does he know what a site plan is? Yeah, he's drawn one. Yeah, but it's. I no, provided I, what has been asked of me to provide, and I. Yeah, but it's 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 not. It doesn't give a scale. And we don't have the comments from the police department answer. Yeah, we don't have the comments from, from yeah. I, I, the in fact, department. we got some of the stuff tonight, and we shouldn't be having a meeting and, and having stuff given to us at, at night. I mean, um, I, well, I did what is required of me to do, and I'm sorry. To give us the stuff for tonight? I didn't give it to you tonight, sir. Well, it's when I got it. We say uh, it was received in the office on Tuesday. We emailed it out on Tuesday. But what when do we the regulations it. say? How long before when we have a meeting? What the, the uh, right upstairs? Up we usually required like ten days prior. Um, I, I'm not aware of that. And I'm I not that fast a reader, that. sir. I can't read this stuff. Right, which I understand. All I'm asking is that you give me another chance, so that way I can provide. Well, that's what I'm saying. Thing. Denying without prejudice does so. Right. Mm -hmm. But that will also have a burden off another expense, three hundred and something dollars on me. Well, sir, I no. can't help it. Nope. I don't know. Yes, well, no. if he has to refile. If he if he refiles, Jen, correct me if you see something I'm missing. You would have to pay for the legal ad, right? Well, let's not argue that. Let's okay. either do no. it or I mean, come on. All right. All I'm asking is just to yeah. you know, fair to I'll, be fair to us. Uh, yeah. We're done. I'll close twenty nine fifteen. So now it's um, closed. You can't receive any more information, correct? That's right. right. So, so a special meeting won't make work. a no motion then. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to deny public hearing two nine one five without prejudice to renewal. Second. Second. Motions are made and seconded to deny without prejudice. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. That gives you time to talk to the police department, to talk to uh, engineering, engineering or whoever, and fire. It, 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 it gives you some time to get somebody that can survey your property or has done your property to give us an accurate uh, description of your property, where your driveway is, where your house sets, uh, the, parking. Bus, the parking. I'm, I'm, I'm just a little bit confused because the town has all this information from, from get-go. I mean, when somebody built a house, he's not going to hypothetical say I'm gonna put it on without information. Sir, it's not our responsibility to go dig that out. I don't. I get it from your records. I have all the information I provided you from the town records. But you had a site plan. Right. No. The I business also it. has different requirements. I have, I have the options a site plan or Enfield GIS. Who this, told this, you this. just a GIS? We said we needed a scaled drawing. Um, and that we can also um, work with a GIS drawing if he had all the information that he needed on there. But Maybe there should be a little sheet that you hand out to all the there people. Is. Well, hold That's on, he the had the GIS and he drew an inaccurate parking thing and, and street that Actually, looked like it went out already, into Carroll. I was already in that. I haven't drawn myself. J Jimmy, I found, and I was going to say later, it's and already I, I hate in to go through yeah. this, it's just like we got a brand new applicant. We should not even have, the, we're, I feel right. for but him. He's I mean, saying he has a turnaround, here, but right. he's turning around on the lawn. Yeah. So that's that's not an accurate statement. Yeah. And that's why I want to see a site, a site plan. plan. 
that shows exactly what For is a business, there. Your parking lot has to be paid. Jimmy, anyways. some of these people, when they gave, they gave us back the the, the, the form you no, gave no. him, Asphalt. did he ever get this form, uh, the one with the checklist, and it tells you exactly what you need? Yeah, it comes with the um, the application. All of that material is all given to the applicant at once. So did you give him that? Did you, did he have that? Everyone, yeah, it's all one stapled package together. All right, because that lists everything that should, he should have. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a checklist that I think Michael insisted that we have that, or or Roger started it. I think I was thought. Yeah, I, I talked to Mr. O'Brien when he was here, and that was the whole. The, that's what he in, instructed me to do. This is this is what you need. This is what you need, uh, because the house already in the office overlay. We're not changing those. We're just permitting the use. Uh, sir, I. I He's denied without prejudice. There is no I know it's already, it's already yeah, it's already denied. I mean, it's it's just like on the the map, the GIS you gave us shows us wetlands, and I know your house doesn't sit in the wetlands, because that's a question I asked, and so that's that's what uh, what's one of the problems. We need a, a accurate site plan. Where can I get that from? An engineer or a surveyor. The town doesn't have the information. I have no idea. If you'd like to go search the records, uh, I guess, how does he apply for that? Um, I mean, you can look on the land records to see what maps are filed for your property in the clerk's office. Um, sometimes the building department has plot plans on file as well. The land records are on the computer, on the town website. But he can, can he, how do you get a copy of that? That's not going to serve Oh, us. no, but it'll save him time. If, if it's not there, he it won't be on the land records. It seems like a great serve. idea to have a discussion after yes. after the I meeting mean, or the yeah. next day with staff, and mm -hmm. this could be ironed out, particularly with an ART, if that's what you'd like. Yeah. There's a lot of questions that can be answered and gone back and forth with staff at another uh, time. Perhaps it's not a good idea to try to handle it in Florida up to here with by telephone. I, there's too many questions and unanswered, and we really have a long meeting tonight, sir. I'm Thank sorry. You. and really shouldn't have come down here. Okay. Is that thing I gotta read here? Where, where, where are we now? Okay, 2909's uh, zoning t uh, text change. Secretary, please take the roll. to read that one. <laughs> yeah, you do. Just a second. Illegal notice? No, 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 no. no, no, no. Yeah. Just the... Uh, the uh, yeah. Vice yeah. Chairman, take the roll, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Charles Duran. Here. Charles Ladd, here. Nick Lafakis. Here. Uh, Ken Nelson. Here. Virginia Higley. Here. Linda DeGray. Here. Sarah Gruber. Here. Alton Hus Gruber and DeGray will be sitting in for the absence of commissioners. Welcome, gentlemen. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Um, just for the record, introduce yourselves. So absolutely. Just, you know, I, I we, was going to do we're that. We're familiar. Yeah. Uh, Again, for the record, uh, Attorney Paul Smith's 27 South Main Street, Windsor Locks. Representing the applicant to my right is Dave Zayak um, from Hesketh Engineering. And to my further right is uh, Frank Triano. Um, with regard to the hearing we um, we had on the 12th, there there were three uh, open issues with regard to language. One was the open space. We addressed that by, if you looked at the the new proposed text change, we addressed it basically by giving the commission leeway to to. Uh, reject any steepness of slopes or flooding, that sort of thing. So it gives the commission leeway. As you said, Mr. Chairman, if there was slopes that might be usable, you know, the argument is we would count them in. If there was a ravine, obviously the commission could reject that. So that, that was sort of our way of sort of addressing that. Um, with regard to the design, um, 
the request was can we make it developable acres in terms of mat lot maximum lot coverage and impervious coverage and we looked at that and we felt it was workable and then uh, with regard to building height we revised it as discussed it's three occupied stories but the eave of the roof line can't exceed 36 feet and the ridge line of the roof can't exceed 45 feet so those were sort of the three areas that seem to be the most hot button issues and I think we've addressed those certainly willing to entertain any questions that the Commission has about those revisions um, you know we've obviously worked a while with the Commission on this we think overall it's a good regulation that's why we proposed it it's something we think the town needs in terms of addressing um, the need and the viability and I think it's a positive for the town to have appropriate um, multifamily development um, especially as here where it's designed to transition and sort of buffer single-family homes from industrial or commercial areas or to transition so we think at the end of the day it's a good regulation it's it's obviously limited within the corridor as we discussed at the last meeting the I-91 corridor and um, the Commission has at the end of the day a great leeway with any particular application in terms of are they are you all satisfied with the design with how it impacts the existing neighborhood how will the abutting industrial commercial areas impact the multifamily units you're constructing how will um, you know there's a requirement that anything done on the non residential portion of any of these sites it's subject to a special use permit application which means again if someone designs multifamily and you've got commercial next to it you have leeway in terms of what you approve or disapprove of in terms of what are they proposing next door is it too noisy is it too busy so mm -hmm. there's you have all the factors you need so that you don't sort of I think create something that's um, going to be problematic for the neighbors problematic for the people that live in the multifamily or problematic for the people that are trying to do business in the commercial and industrial area so we've given you I think with these revisions all the tools we can and it's really up to when you look at these applications and again in the quarter there's there's not going to be a lot of these applications it's not like there's many many pieces that are going to be subject to this um, but at the end of the day am I bleeding <laughs> am I bleeding that's okay <laughs> the things I do for my clients you know <laughs> definition television. that's it is that it it's a high definition television. Well, I didn't know he was that bad <laughs> thank you thank you very Welcome. much I appreciate that um, but at the end of the day uh, that's you know sort of really where we're at uh, we think it's a great regulation and uh, We'd hope you certainly would entertain its approval. Where's the copy of the new one? Yes, go ahead. Um, thank you very much for the edits. I think you, you really did address what many of our concerns were, and certainly mm -hmm. some of my concerns. Um, I hate to nitpick the issue, but on the wetlands portion, on the mm -hmm. open space paragraph, I guess I would propose one edit. Um, of the ad additional language that you have sure um, it currently reads the Commission may reject any area used in the open space calculation which due to st steepness of slopes or flooding should not be considered I guess I would add before the word flooding mm -hmm. uh, the words or wetlands concerns such as flooding and so that would leave open a wetlands concern that isn't necessarily flooding yeah. and essentially conforms to the prior iterations of that yeah I I, I wouldn't see that as a problematic change. Yeah, so I'm I think fine it's, with that. it accomplishes yeah. what we were talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's really the same thing. I, in fact, sometimes you grasp at what language is best, so, you know. I, I'm, I'm, I, I would be happy with that. It's not the same as this. Yeah, but it's Okay. We have two copies. I didn't know which copy was supposed to be. Um, what I try to do normally when I send these out, and I, as I send it to staff, is I give you what's known as a red line, which shows the actual cross-outs and changes, and one that's clean that you, you just can read. Some people, 
I, I tend to prefer sometimes to read a clean one, see where the change is, but then read it. So. These are both clean, though. All right. Sometimes the red lines on the, the printers don't. Yeah, you're right. They'll print red yeah, line. They no, print, you're right. They print light. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a color. I'm sorry. Okay. Somebody want time to read this because it was just sent out over the computer. No, it's no, no, I have it here. Okay. We're good. Okay. We're good. So once we approve, if if we approve this. They still have to come in for a special permit, even for the residential side of it. Oh, yes, yeah, both, both sides. Yeah. Both sides, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it, this would just uh, allow it. Yeah. Now, is, there's no possibility that this could be used anywhere else. Uh, well, I mean, you said the chances would be slim, but. Well, we, we again, Mr. Chairman, as you remember in B, we, dis, we define the quarter where it's applicable. So if, if it's outside the quarter, it can't be used. Obviously, it doesn't so qualify. So apply to any parcel or adjacent parcel. So, okay. So we we one, okay. okay. one mile. Okay. One mile. I don't know if you okay. got yeah. if so all the commissioners well. had copies of the map. I don't know if you saw that or not. Mm -hmm. I so do have. Yeah, the, well. okay. the map was distributed um, at the last. Yeah, um, I'm not, I'm meeting. So it was in the last. Okay. The last packet should still be right. in your binders. Right. Yeah, there you go. The map. Yeah, we had the map. Yeah, I mean it was. It basically uh, is all of Enfield. If you looked at it, that would be west of of the highway, right? Yep. Because it goes to the river, and then a mile on the other side. So it would exclude Skidico, those kind of areas that right. you were concerned about, where it's, no, it you start all, to go just out. Just along the 91 oh. corridor. Yeah, so it's really limited to the corridor. We talked a little bit about. The Thompsonville area and the concern there, but our position is that listen, if someone was willing to do that assemblage, well, in we're working on the zoning there anyway, yeah. and it uh, wouldn't, as far as I can recall, what's on there now, and the others that have been at the meetings, yeah, you need it wouldn't acres. fit. You you would need 25 acres, which is an enormous piece in oh, that. Oh yeah, that, that's, that's the way I'm saying area. it wouldn't yeah. work. That'd be a challenge getting that together. <laughs> <laughs> well, if someone was willing to do it, as I said, maybe it oh, wouldn't yeah. be the well, worst it thing, but it would be a challenge. Willing. You know, yeah. I mean, you'd have to assemble literally, you know, hundreds of pieces. Well, I, but there's nothing I don't think that's industrial down there except. No, uh, yeah, well, I, you know, you could think down by the river sort of thing, but all, all it just, down, yeah, yeah. you'd you basically have to, it's it's an impossible, it would be an impossible undertaking, actually. Unless you wanted to open the Bush and Hill factory again. Okay. Right. If you are done, are any questions from the commission or any comments? I, I'll say... You've worked very well with us, and I appreciate the, the work you've done and the times that you've come back and the extensions you've granted. And uh, I think, and, and the commission, I know, has worked very diligently, too. So uh, I want to thank you. And we do appreciate no that. We appreciate your tolerance and your patience and your, your openness to listening and the back and forth. We do. Okay. Well, let me open it to the public. Absolutely. And, of course, you have the right to come back and explain. Anyone in the public who would like to speak in favor or against this application? <clears throat> Anyone in the public, please come forward again and name an address. I should get her here to comb dinner all that time. Flat tire. <laughs> <laughs> it's too low, it looks like <laughs> yeah. you'll be dead. Karen LaPlante, 166 North Maple Street. Um, again, I'd like to reiterate, I know probably nobody took the time to go through the parcels on the GIS that would be within the one mile area, so I did, and I've highlighted the connector roads on these maps. Um, I'd like to pass them out. I did not have copies for everybody, but I'm sure um, once you see them, you can have staff take copies and distribute them accordingly. But um, as you look at these, I've marked out parcels owned by one party uh, that make the qualifications. Um, they're residential properties. Um, 
some of them are owned, they're smaller parcels, but they're owned by the same party, or they could be owned and accumulated into a 25-acre parcel um, quite easily. Um, there are some with a number of wetlands on them. I don't know if they could be developed, but they're still 25 acres or more. I mean, there's one parcel with 59 acres right along the highway that could easily be developed. Um, and, you know, these connector roads and, and what actually a connector road is and what the uh, local roads are could be up for discussion um, because the state DOT, I looked at the state DOT um, definition of a connect collector road and, and I think a lot of these roads and I, I, I dashed those roads that I think are still collector roads, whether they're defined in our open, our plan of conservation and development as open, as uh, collector roads or not, I don't know. But um, these bigger parcels with the wetlands on them, you know, it still might be worthwhile to develop them because they can get enough of the property you know, based on the regulations. They could, they could still do it. So if you could look at these four maps that I've produced, um, I've tried to mark the streets on them. I'm not a GIS expert, so I had to do it with pen and paper, but I did print them out from the uh, town's GIS. Are, are all share. four are the same? Yes. Yeah. No, they're all separate. They're all separate areas. Oh. oh. We'll look at them in plastic. There's probably 25 different parcels along that 91 corridor. Um, so one of the questions I have is the one-mile corridor that you're talking about, if a parcel partially is in that one-mile corridor, does the whole parcel become developable or just a part of the parcel that is in within the one mile? Um, do you draw the line halfway through the parcel when you draw this imaginary line of the one mile? Um, so well, that, that would be one of the questions that I don't know if it's clearly defined, if it's somewhere else in the regulations. I don't know. These are continue, these are, this is for zones that uh, industrial that abut residential. It doesn't say that anywhere, Charlie, if you look at it. It does on, uh, Under applicability, it does not require it to be industrial or commercial attached. The purpose states it. It says. The purpose states it, but it doesn't say anywhere in there. section uh, B. You're talking to your mic. Or adjacent parcels we under the same ownership. I'm sorry. Apply to any parcel or adjacent parcels under the same ownership that comprises 25 more contiguous acres, a minimum of 15 acres zone residential, and the residential development shall be in the residential zone partial portion of the parcel, and such parcel located in the I-91 corridor and so forth. So I've got 25 acres of residential property off a of post office road. I should be able to develop it. It doesn't say it has to be both. Right there. It's just saying residential. So that's an issue as far as I'm concerned. Um, it's not within the mile corridor. Sure it is. All those parcels, all those parcels that are lined in purple, are within the one mile corridor. Okay. So I guess what you would propose, or the the suggestion is, under the applicability paragraph, it would say. Um, under the same ownership that comprises 25 or more contiguous acres of which a minimum of 15 acres shall be zoned residential and the remainder of the parcel shall be zoned industrial. Right. That's I think that's all I think that that solves the problem, doesn't it? It solves the problem, but then we go to the question what is this zoning text change going to do to what you're trying to do on the riverfront? You're trying to produce It'll do nothing. You're, you're tr it shouldn't. That's not true. It, you're trying to get investors in Thompsonville to build transit oriented development. You're changing the zones to allow five plus housing units, 600 square foot apartments, the same thing you're allowing here and and um, you want it within the transit area so we can get a train station. So now you're going to say in direct contrast to or in direct competition to those pieces that might be downtown that might be interested which this developer owns a couple of them that would qualify for these type of buildings um, and we might actually get rid of some blighted properties down there um, it's going to be a direct competition it's going to be allowed in Thompsonville let's start there 
it took me six months to rent my apartment in Thompsonville, and, and my apartment was totally redone f four years ago. Okay, so what's going to happen when we develop these apartments, you know, out on South Road? The money's going somewhere else in town, not in this local area, which we're trying to stimulate growth, and, and, and it, you're going in correct contrast to what you're trying to do in Thompsonville. You're, you're doing two competing different things as far as I see right now, okay? The other, the other item that I have a question on is your open space, um, his item number eight. Your definition of open space in your zoning regulations, page 17, states um, open space, any part of a lot not occupied by a building open to the sky on the same lot as the principal building as distinguished from open space required in single family open space subdivisions which is under common or municipal ownership. So there's two different types of open space. Which one are they defining when they define, when they talk about number eight, the open space? Because um, they seem to be talking about the grand idea of what is open because it's not developed versus what is required under your open space subdivision um, regulations, which the only item here they're saying that you have to set aside a thousand square feet per dwelling unit, but the way they're defining it here within the same paragraph, it can be anything that doesn't have a building or parking or whatever. So it's a little confusing um, because the regulations that you refer to a 4.7.1, 4.70.123 and the 9.2, nothing requires open space there. So the only place you're requiring open space is this paragraph, and it's confusing it with the definition of the open space of not occupied by a building open to the sky. So um, that should be clarified. I urge you to hold off on this. I know everybody's worked hard on it, but I don't think it's the right time for this. I really don't. Thank you. Thank you. There were anyone else would like to speak in favor or against this application? Anyone else would like to speak in favor or against the application? Anyone else to speak in favor or against the application? This Attorney Smith. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, briefly, again, uh, it, 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 this doesn't apply to 25-acre residential properties alone. There, You've got stated purposes in A, which is part of the regulation, and it says it has to be transitioning from residential to industrial and commercial zones. So if we don't fit within that 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 purpose, I don't I don't know how you would approve it. So would I, you be okay with the change that I suggested? Yeah, I, which is which is after in the applicability paragraph. Um, in the line that says in which a minimum of 15 acres shall be zoned residential adding right after that right and the remainder shall be zoned industrial uh, I would say industrial or commercial because well you don't industrial wanna, or commercial sure. so you yeah, don't want to limit it to yeah yeah that's fine sure. industrial, commercial. industrial slash Cause commercial. That, that just marries it up with the purpose yeah I, I'm, I'm just saying if you looked at the purpose right. of this functionally if oh, I brought I, to you one that's in the middle of I a residential saw, area seen that before and, and but you'd be okay with that change well, I think yeah. that's good um, I, I don't see a problem with that industrial commercial there and um, I, again I, I don't see this as a zero-sum game with whatever you're what, what's trying to be accomplished in the Thompsonville area I'm, you know uh, you need to have all these kind of components moving forward you know it's it's not zero-sum and if you can get some good multifamily housing in the corridor it may enhance what you're trying to do in Thompsonville it, it won't take away from it. So I just don't understand that 
that that kind of thinking respectfully. I, I understand sometimes we all resist any kind of change. I get that. Um, but that's inevitable, you know, it's inevitable. And you, I think we're trying to do it in a way that's, that enhances the town, that enhances whatever projects come in with this and, you know, to move it forward in a positive way. And again, this is the first step. The second step is step is a much more detailed review by this commission of any application and to be satisfied that all these criteria are met to your satisfaction that we're not negatively impacting residences in the area that we're doing a good transition that we're not you know we're not developing it in a way that's going to negatively impact either the commercial or industrial areas or the residential areas so I think it works okay uh, attorney Smith then you accept the uh, changes that the, the Yes. That been Hold suggested on. Tonight. One more, I guess I'm, I'm needling at it, but uh, <laughs> well, I guess the way I phrased it would still allow for a solely, or arguably would so allow for a solely zone, residentially zoned parcel. In other words, if we said at least 15 acres shall be zoned residential, and at least a portion of that parcel would be zoned commercial or industrial, right. and the remain, and so then you're only applying to parcels that are zoned both. Right. Because otherwise you could say, well, my wholly residential parcel is a minimum of 15 percent yeah, residential. Yeah. Listen, my only, uh, and, and we can talk about this, I, I, I think it, it would work that way. I, what I would caution you is somebody may have a 25-acre parcel that's adjacent to an industrial or a commercial area, and I don't know if there is one. I'm just talking hypothetically. I have no knowledge okay. of a parcel like that. And they may come in and say this is a great parcel for this transition right because I want to you know I want to do it all all uh, multifamily but here's what I have on you know adjacent to it um, and I think it should be applicable but I I'm if if I you want to say way you put it, uh, it was right if you want to put it the way you well, did that's fine well I think what you're Remember, saying it's it 25 acres right sure but what I guess the suggestion is you'd have as the member of the public said, you could have a wholly residentially zoned parcel, so no industrial portion whatsoever, and that would it open up that would open it up to a, a larger universe of parcels that would qualify because you don't need to have a portion of that parcel in an industrial zone. Yes, you do. Yeah. It says it's a transitional. Up right. Above. Well, oh. but transitional could still be it's industrial next door in a parcel I don't own. And it's still transitional if it's next to an industrial zoned parcel, even if it's not mine. And I, the way it's been presented to us, we were run, running under the assumption that it would be one parcel covered by both zones, and that's what it would apply to. So if we want to keep it to it that. It says under the same ownership. Yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't require a parcel that parcel. or adjacent parcels under the same ownership. That shall be zoned a minimum zoned residential, but it doesn't say. 25 or more continuous acres. No. 15 have to be residential. The rest have to be of those 25. Right. At least uh, 15 have to be residential. So the rest of them. 10, but. Oh, if the whole thing is residential, then you're still. You can't. It's a. But if it's next to an industrially zoned parcel, uh, not under the same ownership, it would still apply in that paragraph. No, it would. It's the same ownership. It was right there. If you want to transition from residential to industrial, not with something in between, a commercial facility in between that's a transitional piece. You want to have something, a buffer in between. Well, I, I understand the purpose, but the difference here is, is the industrial. make sure you have it is either requiring that a parcel that is subject to this language requiring that it also have a portion industrially zoned it does yeah. say that no it doesn't well, not now it doesn't your, your language change said under the same ownership and the remainder shall be uh, industrial or commercial well let's right? say a hundred percent is residential doesn't qualify yeah it doesn't qualify right. if you think you can interpret it that way that's well, it does. I think I understand what you understand Sarah's what I'm saying, saying is to make it very clear right now people in this room understand it but in 10 years when right. those same different people come before us they may interpret it differently so being very precise and clear right now makes it easier for whoever's sitting here in 10 years to make that 
determination. I, I hear what Sarah is saying. I get that. So if they're okay saying that the 15 acres is residential and the other portion commercial slash industrial in that wording, whatever Sarah said, I, I don't remember exactly how she said it. I'm whatever sorry. she said. <laughs> what she said, I think that would be, that would well, clarify for I, 10 years it. from now. I've got it. it I've got the answer. Okay. 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 Here's how I would read it. Under applicability, it would say this section shall apply, only apply to any parcel or adjacent parcels under the same ownership that comprises 25 or more contiguous acres zoned both residential and industrial or commercial, of which a minimum of 15 acres and the remainder is, is you see what I'm saying? So you'd, it would only apply to parcels that are zoned both, and then it says within that parcel that has both zones, 15 right. is at least 15 is residential, the remainder has to be the industrial. I think that solves the problem. Yeah, yep. that's fine. Okay. All right. Do you accept that? Uh, yeah, it's basically the same thing. So yeah. Yeah. yeah I, At least we're being clear. Is, yeah. All right. Okay. Different wording. Any problems with the rest of the commission? I, I see this as a pretty good thing. It gives us control, and hopefully, it avoids another <coughs> Manning Road. You know, by making it transitional instead of having residential, but right up to industrial. You know, we can control how it merges over. You can't put a trailer park in there, <laughs> you know, a tractor trailer. Tractor park. trailer, right? Uh, I so. haven't closed it yet because I got to open it up again. So, uh, yeah. are we all set then? With uh, now, yes. what, what yes, changes sir. have we had to this document that sets in front of us that you have down, just um, so that we know? The only change at this point would be the language that commissioner wanted with regard to applicability. I think I don't think we. And then the wetland. Oh, and the change in eight with regard to um, wetlands, wetlands concerns such as, such as flooding was the language, yep. correct? Yep. Okay, so there's two area changes and you have both? Right. Yep. All right, as our secretary, have you both those changes? I just want to make sure, okay. Uh, let me go back to the yes, public. Absolutely. Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against the application? Last call to speak in favor or against the application, then I'll, call, I'll close uh, public hearing. Uh, <laughs> I forgot the number. No, I got you. Uh, it's uh, 2909. 2909. Sorry. It is closed. Uh, Okay, that's done. You want to vote on it tonight? Or uh, that's up to you. Until you. Right. we see the write up on the other. Changes? What? Well, those are the only two changes that you I have. Know, if you want to see it in writing. That's up to you. I, I, I don't make. I, I don't make it. If you want to. We got three months to approve it. Hearing no, uh, no motion, I shall move along and let me find my well, minutes. Anybody wants to make a motion first. Uh, well, I, I hear no motion. That's what I said, so I'll move along. I so I, to see. What? Do you want to wait? I think I'd like to wait a cycle just to consider it. Well, yeah, I you just can't would like to see a, that. I, yeah. I, so we'll hold off on that. Okay. Uh, new business public hearing. No, uh, plan. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, site plan. Do we need to make oh, 89 Phoenix Avenue. I'm cold. Yes. Uh, we need to motion, motion to, to take do it under advisement. This. Excuse me. Do we need to make a motion do you, to just? Do you want to make a motion to table that item? I think That's so. I yeah. Thought. Well. Yeah. I, I can't make a motion. Mr. That's Chair, I'd like to make a motion to table public hearing 2909. Second. For our next regular meeting, I guess. Second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. Discussion? Hearing that, all in favor? There's no time, is there? Uh, well, it'd be the next meeting. It'd be September. Right. And they're still within? Yeah. We have three months, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, now we have the three time. Months. Yeah. So you, you guys now have 65 days to make a decision, so. Okay. Okay, what's the next one? Okay. Uh, This, uh, sir, I, 
again, will tell you I just received this material this evening. This we material. To, uh, take a vote. Uh, uh, so I will open, I, I take uh, uh, Yeah. The new um, secretary, please take oh, the roll, and uh, re I'll read the legal notice. Then read it. Charles Duran here. Glad. I'm sorry. It's, yeah, if it's, it's, it's no legal notice, go ahead. Uh, Nicola Fakus here. Ken Nelson here. It's confused. Virginia Higley here. Linda De Gray here. Sarah Gruber here. Commissioners Gruber and De Gray will be sitting in for the absent commissioners. Uh, this is a site plan review, so uh, there is no legal notice. The problem I have, sir, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, please introduce yourself and uh, who you represent. Yeah, uh, my name is Kurt Bloom. I'm with Facility Solutions Group. We are the contractor that is uh, installing the solar. Uh, is your microphone on? Because yes. I can barely hear you. It's on. Hello? Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> How's that? Is that better? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'll go over that again. My name is Kurt Bloom. I'm with Facility Solutions Group. Uh, we have been contracted to install a uh, solar uh, system on the uh, 89 Phoenix Avenue facility. Control Module Incorporated is the company that owns that building. Okay. Now, the material, let me start. Uh, We've been waiting for this material to come in. It just landed on my desk this evening. I don't know how you expected the group of people to read that material and act on it. Uh, which it's a short period of time. material are you referring to specifically, sir? Sorry. Uh, aren't you the uh, 89 Phoenix Avenue? Correct. Yeah, this solar. Correct. Yeah. And your application has been in uh, for. How long? Uh, it's probably a oh, couple months now. Yeah. And uh, your final hearing date is when? The today. Oh, is it today? It was yes. today. Yeah. It was and an extension. We got the material when? Today. Yeah. This material, uh, some of it was sent a couple months ago. In fact, most of it was. Uh, the material that we asked for, though, sir. Well, the map week is stamped July 16th. This yes. Just got tonight. That's right. That was sent, uh, that got here. I emailed that on this, I believe, the 16th, and then it should have arrived on Monday. Right. And the regulations say how many days before for, uh, for our meetings? I believe, uh, I don't know, 20 or so? 10 days. 10, Ten days. days, okay. Uh, again, as I said to the last applicant, uh, I'm a fast reader, but not that fast. Sure, I, I and I did honestly. I did not expect that we would get this review today, but I was told that we would get it today. That this is why I came. Well, <laughs> the problem is, and Jen, how long? He has no more days that we can extend, right? No, it was until today, and that's that's it. So, <clears throat> we have to approve or not approve tonight. I, I, myself, individually, and I don't know, I can't speak for the others, wouldn't, how can I approve it when I haven't read it? I, I thought it was just solar panels, but I see garage doors around there. Right, so the garage doors is a separate uh, issue, I guess, and that was holding up the solar. The, the garage doors have nothing to do with my company, um, but that held up the Solar part array. Of hearing those? Excuse me. Part of our hearing that we're authorizing those changes in the garage doors. I believe so. Yeah. And the garage doors so, are there. Yeah. What happened? Operating. Yeah. That's what, correct. What had happened was when the fire marshal reviewed the original application, he said that there were ar there were uh, issues um, with that building as as it was, and so the application was tabled until that the issues with the fire uh, marshals were. Um, rectified and basically the fire marshal said file a building permit for all of the work that was done without permits in there and so I believe they did that um, but they can't move forward with the building permit until um, planning and zoning says that the changes that were made are okay 
So we have to authorize, that's why I want to know partially too. So, yeah. Are we authorizing the garage doors as well as the solar now? Yes, yeah, so the the application um, with, the, with this narrative and the new plans um, is amended to include the garage doors now and the um, solar panels. Yeah, but the legal ad does too, or everything is, would be legal. It's now? the description. So if, if when you if you if you were to approve it, you can just um, amend the resolution to include the garage doors. Okay. I, uh, Do we know how many solar panels and the wattage and stuff? No, so this is it's all. I. No, the solar panel stuff was in our packet from a while ago. I think oh. the new stuff we got would re related solely to the garage doors. Oh, okay. Is that correct? Right? Okay. Yes, yeah, so we've that's had correct. that in our packet since right. June. I, I apologize. Oh, I thought it was all tied together. What? Yeah, it is all one um, application now. You're uh, reviewing and approving the solar panels and the garage doors. Unless, I mean, if you want. I thought it was a problem with the solar panels, the location of the. Uh, it's a problem uh, with the fire department. The fire department. They're not in compliance. Right. The problem is, yeah, with the building. There's a portion of the building that they were. Electrical, um, it was. So, uh, something to do with the panels, electrical connections or something? Our discussions with the fire marshal said that his concerns were with the, what the use inside the, the building and the addition of the doors leading to that um, expanded use of the building in there. So we said, okay, fix what you have to fix with the fire marshal. And we are waiting for documentation of that. But then so we you don't have the okay from the fire marshal yet either. Well, we received um, comments from the fire marshal because when these plans came in, we sent them over to him, and he said the, that they have no problems with with the addition of the doors that that exterior change. And um, so, under the the building department, the building permit that's review, that's they would that. then go in and review um, everything else interior. Well, but that, so that doesn't that, get started the dust until today. But he, no. so that was his main problem was with just the doors? And the use that they, they I guess they installed um, other like racks and stuff that was inside the building that were fire code They're issues. They're operating without a CO for that part of the building. Mr. Chair, if I may, we got this application and the application was pretty complete with respect to the solar panels. Yeah. And then we got a comment from the fire department that said there's a bunch of outstanding code violations yeah. and now um, Jen is telling us the fire department has since said we're going to address all those code violations through the building permit process, but they can't go to the building permit process until we approve the plans. Now the new plans we got today solely relate to the garage doors. We've had the solar panel plans since months ago. So I guess in my view I see this as we've had a completed application on the solar panels. The only thing that was holding up was getting a little bit more detail about the garage doors, which we got tonight, and addressing the fire marshal's concerns, which we're told is going to be addressed through the building permit process. Yeah. So I see this as yeah. somewhat complete, unless you have an issue with the garage door plans we got this evening. I, well, I like to have plans that I not at the same evening is a problem. I, we received the plans on Monday. We got them out to you in your email on Tuesday. I know that's that's not uh, ideal, but. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, and they're in operation. That's why. I, 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 it's up to what you want to do. I, I, I have no idea. It's rather confusing, and I know tonight is, is, is the deadline. If you want to take something with the application that's just handed you tonight, that's. I guess I, I, don't see a, I don't see any problem with the garage doors. I mean, from what I understand, they've already been installed. That's correct, yeah, and they are on the opposite side of the road, So, and that building is surrounded uh, by woods on three sides. And we got comments, or didn't get any comments about the garage, so we've previously gotten comments about the solar panels, which we've addressed through the building permit process. We have gotten no other adverse comments relating to the garage doors, which were already installed. <sighs> so I see this somewhat as ready to go, unless, Mr. Chair, you'd like some more time to consider the garage door I, permits. I, I just don't like I material on my table the night that I'm supposed to vote on it. I agree with Sarah that this applicant's been waiting for a long time to be heard on the solar fault. panels. Um, I understand, you know, that there was some issues with the building and they seem to have been corrected. And as long as building is okay with 
the installation of the doors that they're done properly. That, I can see thing. why we can't hear this. Bread. I just uh, the the drawings are just here tonight. I uh, haven't even looked at them. The only place I looked at them was on the computer, and I really like to go through the drawings. But that's up to you. A few people. It's to me, it's da it's dangerous territory when you accept drawings and material the night of a meeting and you vote on it. I I would normally agree with you. On the garage doors, though, they're just two garage but, doors that uh, were installed on the back side of the building. Yeah. That you can't even see from the road as far as the solar panel goes that must have been before i was put on the commission yeah, because i, I don't know anything about it and i thought that's all we were I thought all, is yeah. doing two garage or three garage doors so well that's what i thought we were doing in the first place was just the solar panels until i saw the email come in and, and was talking of garage doors but <laughs> It's been a while since i read them but that was pretty straightforward <laughs> the solar panel drawings and stuff yeah they were Oh, yeah. And normally staff would say, like, we'll, really, we'll accept your drawings if they came in on Monday. We wouldn't normally send them to you on Tuesday to be on the agenda for that Thursday. Normally we would say... My con, Jen. Yep. I'm moving closer. Normally we would say, like, roll it over to the next meeting. So, But in the absence of a meeting in August and the time clock running out, that's the only reason we pushed it through right. for this Thursday. So I guess if you wanted to... Um, you could act on it tonight. Um, there's no if there's no more time on on it. If you wanted to um, have him withdraw or deny without prejudice and, prejudice and come back in September to review the plans, it's really it's up to you. Well, like Charlie said, I don't really like to set a pattern on doing this, but we also do want to be user friendly to our mm -hmm. businesses in town. So. Yeah, but that's, that's fault. Hopefully with our new planner or new boss up in the room up there, we're going to have more defined practices. <laughs> it's, not, it's not our planning office fault, nor our, no, our I didn't fault. I not say it was. No, I know. It's, it's but the applicant's fault that it's not here all in one package. But that's... This was not that's brought to our attention. What he wants to do, if he wants to review that, he's new. Or he could abstain, and then you, he's down. He's down two vote, or down a vote. I, yeah, I don't know abstain. what don't people know are going to do. You got panels. seven people sitting here. No, it's, no, it's, it's a nice meeting. Okay. Well, yeah. well, you want to make a motion? Go for it. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to approve site plan 1745. Uh, based on the draft draft resolution dated May 17, 2018. Yeah, I think that's it. Second. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? I intend to vote no. It's a dangerous uh, precedent. And uh, I would like to review everything all at once. It's been, as somebody said, Quite a while since we had the drawings of the the other, even that, and uh, I, it's not the fault of our office, and it's not the the fault of anyone sitting here. It's the applicant, and well, he, we won't he get knew the blame for it. The, the, he, he knew that. If if I may, sir, um, the we were not informed that we needed a plan set for the garage door until much much later. Uh, then you know we submitted yeah, the, the, the by who you weren't the SBR, informed we're, by the, the, the city. That discussion's been closed because a motion's been made. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm just saying why well, I intend to vote no. Understood. Mr. Chair, if I may, I I, I share your concerns quite often about receiving information last minute. Um, I've in the past, as you likely remember, have voted no or if I were to be seated that night uh, said I would vote no on that basis but from what I see in front of us there's three pages total it's on an unobjectionable in my view uh, addition for the garage doors and we've had the other information uh, the solar panels for quite some time and I reviewed them back then and I've reviewed them again prior to this meeting 
Um, so I share your concerns. I just think in this instance, it's a very small amount of information that I find um, to be appropriate. And so I would, I intend to vote yes on this proposal. I would like to make a site specific condition that um, this would only, if it does pass, be approved only after building has approved all of the um, outstanding problems that building they had along fire. with the fire department, um, then I don't have an issue with it because we have been looking at this for a while. So um, I would vote yes as long as building and fire are in line with this. And so. that's that's already site specific yeah. condition well, number nine. There, were so there no I, conditions uh, listed for us? I'm sorry. There's yeah. There yeah there's four site specific conditions. Four site. The concerns of the fire marshal must be addressed, and there's three other. Well, I, when the motion was made, did you refer to these as, uh, or just make a blanket motion? I, I referenced the draft re resolution, but I can amend the motion or make a motion to amend. To again reference the same draft re resolution that contains the 26 conditions of approval on the same one. I still second it. Okay. That's she, not so, as long as that, she, she referenced the memo. Yeah, okay. she referenced that, so. Okay. Well, that's, then that's what's on the, I just wanted to make sure that that was what was on the record that um, you're voting on. Mm -hmm. Someone better remove the question. Are you not ready to vote? All in favor? One, two, three, four, five. Opposed? One. Abstain? One. So the motion passes. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time and effort on all this. It's five. One and one. One, one. And uh, you'll have to put the uh, people the way they voted. Thank you. Okay. You're all set. We're all set on uh, public hearing 12 James Street. Uh, 2908. This is a public hearing. If you read the legal notice, please, and take the. Uh, dig it out here. I'll be right there with you. And take the roll. Well, momentarily, sir. <laughs> it's all right. Which they have the same problem. The table here. You just don't have a helper to sit next to you. There it is. <laughs> oh, here it is. She keeps me in the right pass, and she passed. I got it. 2908, right? That's the trouble with having paperwork on the desk. 2908? Yeah. Why would we open it if it didn't have a public hearing sign? Yeah. It, it has to open it. Oh, it does? Advertise. Huh? It's a public hearing. I know, oh, but no, the public hearing. Yes, please. We'll, we'll get there. Okay. First, I'll call attendance. Charles Duran? Here. Charles Ladd, here. Nicholas Lefakis? Here. Ken Nelson? Here. Virginia Higley? Here. Linda DeGray? Here. Sarah Gruber? Here. Commissioners DeGray and Gruber will be sitting in for the absent commissioners. Which one? We're 2908, right? Yeah, 2908. Okay. 12 James Street special use permit application for an agricultural activity to allow a, a duck farm. Patricia Steele, owner applicant. Map 101, lot 0064, R33 zone. It was advertised in the Journal Inquirer on. It was advertised in the Journal Inquirer. Oh, oh, Saturday, July 7th, and Monday, July 16th. Okay, is the applicant here? She comes forward, please. Here they come. Uh, I will have to open this. I, well, actually, I oh. cannot. Mm. Uh, the public hearing sign was not posted. I, nobody it, told me there was a public hearing. I'm sorry? Nobody told me there was a public hearing. Our zoning enforcement officer was trying to get in touch with you um, because we, we normally send him out to check for signs um, when they're due for to be posted. Um, and he said he tried emailing and calling you with, but we didn't receive a response. So. I never got a voicemail, a phone call, nothing. Um, yeah, my our, service isn't great there, so I don't know. Have you, uh, well, uh, I know when I talked to you yesterday, you, you said you were surprised when I said you had a I was, today. absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so. Mm -hmm. 
I can't. I, I'll have to open it to the public tonight because it was legally advertised. I guess that too is a notification to you, but maybe you Sorry, don't read the newspaper. Well. I don't know. We had that last oh, week. I can't hear you. Yeah, I'm sitting back too far. Yeah. Uh, so now, what have we got? That. Then uh, uh, hearing man, uh, opening date was six twenty one June or that that's date of receipt receipt of the oh, application. I'm sorry, date, date of receipt and opening the public hearing was eight twenty five. So is that OPH? Is that right? Opening right. So for this one um, on the time. If you open the public hearing, you get 35 days to close the public hearing. Um, I don't. I think that puts you in August. And again, there's no meeting in August, um, if unless the applicant would like to give an extension to that time to go before you in the first meeting in September. Yeah, um, we can have a contingency. Oh well, yeah. Well, no, it should give you a form to fill out to ask. For yeah. An well, you know, hold it. Uh, it yeah, that would because that that's what I was looking for before with that applicant that that whole package that you give the applicant because mm -hmm. that has those all in there and I didn't see any reason does. to give them back to us. But yeah, a, a lot of people send or give us back the but entire package. But that's what package. the fellow <laughs> on Elm Street needs is that packet. Uh, so if you sign this, I, I'll I'll open this to the public because it was advertised legally. And they, those, so the people that read the newspaper or wherever they get their information from have a chance to speak tonight, and, and you'll hear them. But otherwise, uh, and the hearing will start, but we can't hear you or take any action. Do you have any materials you, you want to give us? Everything I you gave, gave you, us, I sent yeah, it in. It was pretty clear. Mm -hmm. Everything you asked for, you got. Yeah. <laughs> The only you know, some people that want to go there already. Oh yeah, absolutely. The only thing was those maps. I don't. Those green maps aren't really very clear. Uh, you almost need a a site plan as well because I I know you offered me to to walk the area, but there wasn't a sign, so there wasn't any need to it. Uh, that's up I to found out from want. a neighbor. I I'm found, sorry? That's how I found out there was a hearing. I found out just a few days before you. Oh, is that right? Yeah, a neighbor uh, told me. Yeah. Oh, good. You have a, a yeah. friendly neighbor then. Okay. Uh, yeah. Again, we did try to contact you. Um, I don't know if there's a better way to contact you if we can't reach you. Why I don't? Um, sometimes my phone doesn't ring. There. Okay. All right. If she can. Um, if she the signs the paper, and while she's signing that, I'll open to the public. Okay. And it, if is there a way that you can stop in maybe tomorrow to pick up the public hearing sign? Yep. Okay. <laughs> well, she doesn't need to post it tomorrow. If oh, sure. We don't. Or. Well, it needs need... to be up at least ten to fifteen days before the public hearing. So. Yeah. So make sure, because he'll he'll be out to check. Make sure it's up. What, 10 to 15 days before? Right. Sure. So you don't want to put it out now anyway. Okay. Uh, okay, so we'll set the hearing date after she signs. Uh, I've opened it, so I guess what we will do. I'll ask if anybody wants to come up. Uh, yeah, I'll have So our first regular up. meeting is in September, September 6th. And yeah. That would be. Yeah, that's when you would come back, September 6th. Yeah. All right. Okay. Just mark your calendar. All right. Put your sign up, you and then it. you'll be good to go. And in fact, if you do so, I'll have her put you on the first. The first. Okay. So we get you one. in and out, and you don't have to wait. <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Anyone here that would like to speak in favor against this application? Please come forward, sir. Name and address for the record. Ma'am. Ma'am. Ma I'm sorry. I can't. It's in the dark back there, okay. or darker. Um, my name is Judy Klebanoff. Um, I live at 10 James Street, right next door to the applicant. Um, I 
just wanted to speak entirely in her favor. I came to um, Enfield about over a year ago or so. We're shown the house, nice neighborhood, beautiful. Went inside, looked like any other neighborhood. Um, went out in the backyard and lo and behold, there were ducks, beautiful ducks. There was a little bridge that led up into um, a barn. Um, there was no noise. I didn't even know there were ducks there. Um, so anyway, I was fell in love with the house and offered full price and bought it in 20 minutes. So I just want to know how much pleasure I have gotten out of it. Um, my grandson asks all the time about the ducks. Um, I think it's a really nice um, addition to the neighborhood. It adds a lot of charm. So that's all I want to say. Thank you very much. Anyone else would like to speak in favor or against? Anyone else would like to speak in favor or against? The other thing I, I understand, this is a, a pre-existing condi condition, correct? Um, this has been going on for a while, I guess. Um, Rick had responded to um, a zoning or code um, complaint that someone had filed well, um, want, maybe. regarding the ducks and I guess there were goats there at one point. Um, would you mind coming back up and, and I guess I should start better and give you a name and address so that she has that and then tell us something about the ducks. Sure, what do you want to know? <laughs> Anything. <laughs> okay. Name and name, uh, just name and address for the record. Oh, 12 James Street, 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 Street. Street. Are you, yeah. Chair, are you going to be hearing it now instead of continuing it because I should leave if you're going to hear it now? No, just, just mm -hmm. well, yeah, no, I just. No, I, I don't know yeah, because, because no um, the public, the sign okay, wasn't posted. Yeah, that, that, yeah. yeah. Um, she gave us an extension. Actually, I it did so. start the public hearing. Is on, yes. There's no sign, so we can't hear it it's anymore. Right. We can't hear it. So. All right, well. Is hearing it, would that be considered asking her name and address? Is hearing it? Well, she's the applicant, she's not the public. <laughs> All right, so I'm sorry, I guess okay. we feel. Sorry. Why doesn't but she I do fall have under to the let farm? the public, huh? With three or more acres, how come she doesn't fall under the farm? It is a farm. It's right, so I have why no idea. That's but why it's I'm... in a residential zone. But a farm is a farm. I know. But that's why I asked how long it's been here, because right. I, 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 that's why I wanted to know is how long the existence, because that would make a difference if it was pre-existing. So I'm, I guess I'm asking is why does she even have to come to us? She's got the acreage. She qualifies as a farm. Oh, uh, well, I saw the licenses. I, I don't know. It qualifies as a farm, but in your regulations, it still requires approval for, agricultural for the activities. agricultural activities on I don't understand. that farm. Mr. Chair, if I may Well, that, I don't want to open it. That's why we shouldn't be discussing I was going it. to move to continue this yes. to our next regular meeting Thank on you. September 6th. Yes. Second. Okay. That's, I'm sorry. <laughs> get, <laughs> who gets straight with, <laughs> oh boy. Okay, thank you. And then we're on Rocket Run. Yeah. Now we're on Rocket Run. You have to vote to continue? Uh, yeah. All in favor of continuing? <laughs> okay. <laughs> But that takes care of it. I still would like to know the history of it and yeah, why. We'll, we'll get you a full report. <laughs> yeah, and why uh, it would be here. Except, all right. Okay. The gentleman, I believe, from Rocket Run. Yeah, take the roll and read the public notice, please. Charlie. Charlie. Oop. You got me drifting <laughs> off here. Well, you had used to it. I lost it again. I know it's in here. What'd you lose? He lost the legal notice. Oh, the legal notice. The attendance is working. Oh, okay, but I'm looking. What do I do with a legal notice? Okay. Okay, Charles Duran. Yeah. Charles, 
Charles Ladd here. Nick Lafakis here. Uh, Ken Nelson here. V Virginia Higley here. Linda DeGray here. Sarah Gruber here. Okay. Commissioners DeGray and Gruber will be sitting in for the okay. absent commissioners. Okay. Uh, published in the Journal Inquirer on Saturday, July 7th, Monday, July 16th. Public hearing 22, 2922 Four Rocket Run. Is that the one we're doing? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Special use permit application to expand an existing non conforming structure to enclose a breezeway and add a rear attached garage. Zachary Allen, Secura applicant, <laughs> map 054, lot 0193, R33 zone. That's it. Okay. Uh, and uh, if you will, your name and address, please, sir. Good evening. My name is Zachary Sykera. I reside at 4 Rocket Run in Enfield, Connecticut. <coughs> and I'm looking to add a garage onto the side of my house with a breezeway also. It'll be an attached to the house. And the, the special use I'm looking for is my house was built 31 feet from the front uh, property mark. And it is now 35 feet. And I want to move my addition two feet further back from the house, which will put it at 33 feet to the front. Which is basically what others have done too in the neighborhood. Yes, and, I, and I'd like to do it for aesthetics because almost everybody else in my neighborhood looks like that, and it'll keep the roof line looking very good. It's less of a non-conforming use. Sir, yeah. Kenny? Yeah, it's less of a non-conforming use by moving it back because mm -hmm. the house is already 30 feet, so he's going farther back, so he's bringing it more into compliance. Right, yeah. That's a, a similar to what the rest of the neighborhood yeah. has had to yeah. do. Jenny? Um, that's RA33, and I um, looked at the, it looks lovely, but um, my concern is how can we give him a variance of 10 feet on the new um, item because it's supposed to be 25 feet? Variance? Well, that's what I'm saying. He would need a variance. We could not approve something that isn't, isn't in compliance with our zoning regulations. Why in other words, he's fine with the 10 feet on the other side because that's already there. But he's, he's building new and as such, he would have to comply with the side current side yard setbacks, which are 25 feet. To ZBA, then. And that you would need a zoning uh, you, variance for. You're talking about the placement of the garage? I'm sorry. You're, you're talking about the placement of the garage? Right, the side of the yes. garage is too close to the property. The side yard line, you need 25 feet according to our regulations, and he shows 10. And um, I'm, I'm wondering Four. why you didn't send him to the um, Zoning Board of Appeals. For the new garage, I believe that's because the accessory buildings are allowed to be within 10 feet of the no. property lines. He has 10 feet on the left side, and he, he's, he's fine with that. But with current building, maybe 10, you, can, you have to adhere to current zoning regulations, right? He's got 10 feet on the left side. The whole neighborhood was built 10 I, feet. I understand. I you couldn't build the house. The house would be removed if you follow current no, zoning. No, the house is there. The house is fine. And right, it's you're lovely saying it's that grandfathered. He's, yes. Okay. That uh, he's putting the garage back. That's lovely. I'm just saying somewhere he needs to find another 15 feet in his. She's saying. We, I, I know what she's saying. Yeah, okay. She's trying to, you know, hold one side of the yard to existing and with the other side to grandfathered. The other side is already built, Ken. I understand. And that. probably when we had zoning then, it was 10 feet. Now it's 25 feet. You know, why not give him 5 feet or just build to the line? I, I, I don't have a problem with the design or what you what you want to do. I have a problem with the side yard setback. I guess I see it in two. There's two ways to look at it. One is that. The other is 
the house is already a non-conforming use, and you can view this as an extension of the non-conforming use, which is permitted by our regulations. You can't make it a more non-conforming use. You can. It well, says I know, I know. Shall be enlarged or extended, and if we consider the house, the residential area, as the non-conforming use, which it is, you can say you're merely extending it. Uh, I understand set, your concern. The setbacks are correct from the street already. Right. Yeah, I see it's a different setback that yeah. you're talking about, but <coughs> we could do it, in my opinion, if Try we could say a, it's compatible with budding land uses, which it is. So first out of a pig's ear. No. Excuse me, if I can add, I had my neighbor on that a budding side write me a letter saying that he approves of it. But, That's okay. Yeah. The... Well, well, he's within the 10 feet. He's got more than 10 feet because he's just showing his side yard setback is 10 feet. And then if this is to scale, he's probably another five feet away from that. So he's 15 feet off the. Yeah, it looks like the building ends here. Right, not here. right. Here. What, Sir, the, what he's may, outlining is front yard. If I may like ask, do you happen to know so, your existing driveway, how many feet it. that is from the side yard? Because I guess I see it as you've got the driveway, you're going to build There's a garage a that now accommodates it, but the driveway itself still is not within that side yard. Right. No, the driveway now is 12 feet off of the house as it sits. Mm -hmm. The driveway can be right up to the property line. Okay. So that's do you currently feet. park? Where I park on the side, I actually park on the side of my driveway, which is where the where I would build the garage. Got it. Yeah, you have the Jeep over there on the side. Yes. Yeah. Do you? I was gonna say the 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 antique. Do you keep that in the street, or where does that? Or isn't that yours? Which one? Though? There was an antique automobile on the street when I was there. Oh, that was um, um, my wife's aunt was watching my son. Oh. She was babysitting for me. Oh. So I, have, I have three vehicles, and but that's part of it. Because I have a Jeep, I, I'd like to have a garage to be able to park inside so I can take okay. the top off. And so he does. He does. He does know. So an accessory structure that's not attached to the house is 10 feet off the property line. Behind the rear line of the house. Behind the rear line of the house. Oh, that's it. Oh, the rear line. So whoever changed the side yard setback from 10 feet to 25 feet basically eliminated the entire neighborhood, any star neighborhood, from building a garage in their house? I have a star home, and I would love to put something on. You're the also other on side. a corner. Yes, but it's two fronts, two rears, and two <laughs> sides, so it's even worse. Yeah, I understand and that. And the point is, I'm not able to do that. And it, it's no reflection. I'm just saying, I checked. Well, I that, let's, uh, the other, the other key is that this. this is a public yeah. hearing. Let's not argue with ourselves right well, here. We do other, that during discussion if you want. The other key is that the, um, while this is zoned R33, it is under 33,000 square feet. And there's a special um, section of the regulations that allows for smaller setback requirements for those lots, which makes the side yard required as 10 feet. So it, he doesn't. What was that uh, section? 4.10.3. Did you get that, Jenny? Yeah. But you will find, if you look, that 98% of the town is non-conforming. Hmm. Well, that's all right. Okay. That helps. I'm looking at 4.10.3. It says, any new construction on a legal non-conforming lot under 33,000 square feet can have a side yard side yard setback of 10 feet okay oh all right so, so we're good thank you so we're good thank you very much we go sounds good okay that solves a uh, major problem okay just uh, vacate your seat and let me open it to the public and we'll see what develops anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor against this application? Last call to speak in favor against the application. Hearing none, uh, I'll close public hearing 2922.
I saw you had the stumps or the trees all cut down and ready to go, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're closed. I chair entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve public hearing 2922 based on the draft resolution dated July 19, 2018, with 14 conditions and no site specific conditions. Second. Motion's made, second. Discussion. Now that um, Sarah read the 10 point section um, I'm, I'm looking forward to voting on it but I would ask staff next time to make sure that's in there so it doesn't become a problem yeah because uh, Kenny's right you go down in these developments and especially trying to find rocket run is I don't know how he got down there in the first place but <laughs> anyhow they're down there real estate people can find that all in, fa all in favor <laughs> Imposed. It's unanimous. Go ahead and have a happy building. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay. I guess the number is zero King Street, twenty nine eighteen. Secretary, please take the roll and read the legal notice. Okay. Charles Duran here. Charles Ladd here. Eclafakis here. Ken Nelson here. Virginia Higley here. Mr. Gray here. Sarah Gruber here. Uh, 2918 we're doing right yep. Yep. mr. chair before we start um, I just wanted to tell the applicant that I reviewed the plans when it was in wetlands it was for the well, runoff. We are no one. you do that when it when we're open and the secretary's taking the minutes because you want that on record okay, uh, okay. Uh, as of the ad in the journal inquire on Saturday July 7th and Monday, July 16th, public hearing 2918-0 King Street, application for proposed development consisting of two buildings, a 500,225-square-foot distribution building, a warehouse space, and a 100,125-square-foot flex building along with associated parking, access roads, and drive aisles. DF Realty, LLC, owner, applicant, Map 016, Lot 0108, Industrial I-1-1 I one, one Zone, Industrial 1 I-1-1 one, one Zone. Uh, that's it. Okay, uh, if you'll introduce yourself, please. Uh, sure. I know. Hold it, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Bruton. I'm an engineer from BL Companies. I have with me Jess Bates, a senior civil engineer from BL Companies, Fred Greenberg, our traffic engineer from BL Companies, Barbara Jocelyn, the project architect from BL Companies, and Mark Fontaine of DF Realty. Um, I also have pictures for town staff of the sign that was hung um, on, on King Street and on Corporate Drive. I'd like to give them to that for the record. Okay. Now, Jenny, if you would, please. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm, I apologize. I just wanted to make sure I got it in the spot. I was. I also sit on the Inland Wetlands Committee, and but we looked at just the drainage. We didn't look at um, the the landscaping or the buildings or anything else. If you feel that it's a conflict, I can recuse myself. I mean, I don't. No, I don't think we have a problem with okay. you. You don't think you have a problem, or you we, don't we, have a problem? We, <laughs> we don't have a problem. <laughs> Make sure that's recorded, please. Okay. All right, now. Okay. Uh, again, I, I don't know how this will come out. It's a, quite a, well, there's the package we received, and how we received it like that, I'll never know, but that's the way we did. Yeah, you guys uh, like to have your plans folded, which, uh, you know, with 100, well, uh, 100 pages, I don't know how your uh, staff didn't get some paper and cuts. We're, we're P and Z, and I guess uh, most of that, the it's top wetlands. parts, we're all wetlands. Uh, it's too bad you couldn't have separated them, but that's uh, okay. Uh, anyway. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I'll just walk through the existing conditions. The map you see up on the screen, I'm assuming it's up on the television screen in we front of you. Well, here it is. There it is. Okay. 
All right, so we have an existing 135-acre uh, parcel on King Street. We have frontage on King Street and Corporate Road. Uh, can you can you see my uh, my arrow? What you got there. Do I have an arrow? So I don't know what this is here on the <laughs> table. Surprise! <laughs> if I another one. If I may ask. Yeah. What are they? Yeah. Jen, Jen, do you know what this is? The, all these binders? Oh, um, the larger binder is, they're labeled, I believe, that they're, um, what you received were the actual, um, I guess the narrative portions of the reports for wetlands for, um, and for uh, stormwater management. Um, so those big binders just have like all the calculations in them as well, like the data. So I guess so, we received a lot of these two cycles ago and we received the plans and sort of like a very skinny mm. packet of just the application essentially yeah, the cover page mm -hmm. and s it we was in like the little know. manila folder yeah and there was nothing I don't recall receiving anything else relating to this and certainly not <laughs> finders worth of the backup data so I'm I don't know what this is can you uh, there, there was a, a workshop remember when I distributed the materials and there was a table that had everything on that um, with application materials, the traffic um, study. It's like the summaries, and you wouldn't have gotten the whole big butt. Right. Right, yeah. It was just this one thing essentially that has the summary right, yeah, of everything. We the, right, we, we never didn't got put the whole calculations in. Right, there. a lot of those reports is a traffic report, stormwater report. It's output from the programs that we use, and it's a lot of tables and, and uh, output that wouldn't mean anything to you except for the text that. I'm assuming is what staff gave you the narratives and the that conclusions and the summaries. It's all the same. <laughs> right. The stormwater report, I believe, is a couple hundred pages. So, um, so they're condensing it down to the actual words of, of the report, and not not the output that the program gives as as backup that usually is reviewed by the town engineer. So is this something though that's part of the? I would assume this is part of the record that we have not knowledge of when we review an application. Right. It's submitted to the planning office in full. Right. You, These binders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the binder, well, I mean, if you want to review all of the calculations, I mean, it's... Um, well, they may want to. That's uh, that's the thing. And so they're here. And I guess, well, I can't see with what's going on tonight anyway that we, you'll be approving. Well, who knows? You, you approved the last uh, one. I didn't think you'd approve tonight either, but that's... I mean, you could have approved this what you, tonight, too. What you I received know. summarizes right. everything that I is in that. there. There's um, two stormwater management. So welcome to take those, and that's, oh, I think, basically what she's saying. But the, uh, yeah, so we require four technical reports submitted, like four copies of it submitted with the application so these binders I just put them out here so that you guys didn't have to lug all of the application materials to the meeting because I know it was a lot so I put the full reports and everything out for you guys and the plans it's it's what you received already um, See the traffic study in the wetlands report? that's what I said if you want them they're there and they, that's apparently why the, Jen left them there. Yeah. But I see what you're saying. They're, I'm just flipping through briefly, and there's a lot of calculations. Yeah, it's just the backup to the, the conclusions. That the first, you know, 12 to 15 pages is what the summary of the existing conditions, proposed conditions, conclusions. Uh -huh. The rest is just the output, which typically no one looks at. So if you want to take them home, you're welcome to take them and let uh, just let Jen know that they're the Jen know that they're gone. Who's got them? So who's there's, got them? There's some on that end. Right, yeah, there's, there's some on this That's end. right. There's to set down there and there's set up here if you want them. Let it let her know that they're there. Yep, I, I left them on the side so that they weren't like clogging up your seat Talk area. about prepared too. We get people coming in and they don't have any backup data for what they're trying to tell us and when we I know, disagree we'll with them, we'll there's the nothing. Other. This gentleman has everything. It's in the library. <laughs> yeah. I would have loved to print less paper. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, the, one, All right. the one thing um, that uh, Raquel brought to my attention is, um, Commissioner Higley, I just wanted to remind you that you did vote on the wetlands application the first time so I just wanted to throw that out there I believe you only get one vote I'm sorry I didn't hear you you need to talk louder or yeah, closer. I didn't hear you either what you did vote on the wetlands application so I know it was a while ago I just wanted to make sure that you were aware of that that you 
only well, get I, that one vote. I mentioned that. Okay. That's why I'm just double checking. That's why I okay. asked. That's why she yeah. made the statement. Right. If he objected to it, then, it then he had to say it now. Things that I looked at. Then we don't get caught in the uh, problem that we if had. If anyone with wants another. me to recuse myself, I have no problem. We're getting doing. sidetracked well, on a lot of stuff <laughs> here. Now. Let's please go back to the applicant and <laughs> let him speak. <laughs> let him speak. Okay. Ready? Yeah. I hope okay. so. 135 acre parcel on King Street. The parcel has frontage on King Street and on Corporate Road. Uh, those both are identified um, on the map. Um, the property line that you see on the page is the actual property line of the entire parcel. Um, it's zoned uh, I-1, which is the industrial zone, and a portion of, is it, of it is in the design overlay district. Um, all the properties surrounding are I-1 except for King Court, um, and a, a parcel or two along King Street that are zoned residential. Um, butters, there is a variety of butters. Um, those include Metro Park North, oh, which is a commercial office building to the south. There's residential homes. There's a couple businesses, including Gas Turbine, Yard House Tavern. Um, down the street is uh, Tri-State Kentworth. And there's obviously a bunch of um, vacant farm fields that are, that are used for agricultural purposes. Um, on, there's also Mullen Road to the north, which has Connecticut Wood Group, which backs up to this property as well. So the site is currently vacant from what you see on the plan on the screen. Uh, it does have wetlands and uh, Bowens Brook right now. Topography varies greatly from 150 in the northwest corner to as low as 80 in some of the wetland areas. There is a FEMA flood uh, zone on this property, but none of the work we're proposing is in that area. Um, the majority of soils are hydrologic group C and D, and there's 14 different soil types um, present on the property. I won't name them all for you. They're in the stormwater management report. Um, the site currently drains to the wetlands and eventually to Bowen Brook, which eventually leads to the Connecticut River. So what you see on the plan uh, on the screen here in front of you is the proposed plan. It's two warehouse distribution facilities which are permitted by use. Uh, the front building, which is closer to King Street, is around 100,000 square feet, and the back building is around 500,000 square feet. This includes 482 parking spaces for uh, employees and uh, 212 trailer spaces. That includes dock trailer spaces and then parking trailer spaces that are not adjacent to the building. This is the minimum that's provided by code. And in, in addition to that, during the inland wetlands process, we shrank down the parking spaces to have compact spaces, which your zoning code allows up to 25%. So we're, we're taking the full credit for that as well. Um, there's two proposed entrances, um, one on corporate extension of Corporate Road and one on King Street. Um, I'll have Fred, our traffic engineer, talk about those in a minute. Uh, both will need CTDOT approval since uh, King Street is a state route, um, and also OSTA approval because of the size of the development, um, the square footage, and the parking, the parking spaces. Once she's near the Army Corps, uh, Army Corps of Engineers approval also? Yes, Army Corps will, will be required based on the uh, earthwork activities with the wetlands on the property. Uh, what you see on the screen now is the uh, utility plan. There's an extensive network of utilities for gas, water, sewer, electric, and tell data. Um, we did receive a comment letter a few days ago from the fire marshal asking about some of these items. Um, there are several hydrants placed around the site on both buildings and a water main. So this entire site was accessible for the fire department in any, in any condition. Uh, the buildings would need to be sprinklered based on their size and their use. Obviously, at this point, there's no tenant secured, so there's no detailed fire sprinkler plans. That would be something that would be handled uh, during a building permit <laughs> process. I'm just going to go back to this one. This is a better visual. Uh, the stormwater management system is designed to comply with the 2004 Connecticut Stormwater Manual, the 2002 Soil Erosion and Sediment Control Guidelines, the DOT Drainage Manual, and obviously the Enfield Town Regulations. Uh, we attenuate peak flows from the previous post uh, development for the 210, 25, 50, and 100 year storm events. Uh, that's accomplished by catch basins with sumps and deep hoods, hydrodynamic separators, sediment four bays, and eight detention basins. Majority of them are above ground. There's one under the parking lot. They're spaced 
um, all over the site, um, and these do drain um, either directly to wetlands or to Bowens Brook to match the uh, drainage patterns that exist on the site today. Unless you guys have any questions at the moment, I'll move on to the traffic engineer and then on to the arch uh, architecture. What page is the parking on in your plans? The parking should be on the SP sheets. So S there's several. There's SP 0 which is the overall plan. And then it breaks down to, um, to several to, to give you chunks of, of each area. Right here, yeah, I know, but this stuff here, I got to just... The, the parking was had been modified, uh, I guess, significantly during the inland wetlands process um, from feedback from the commission and from uh, Roger O'Brien to minimize impervious area, which, but also to provide the minimum amount required um, for the building size. I just wanted to refresh my memory. Yep, not a problem. So I'll have Fred Greenberg, our traffic engineer, come up. Um, and summarize his traffic study. Um, I'm obviously here for questions when they come to you. Good evening. For the record, my name is Fred Greenberg. I'm principal traffic engineer at PL Companies in Meriden, Connecticut. And we prepared a traffic impact study for the project. Um, as Matt mentioned, we have to go to the Office of State Traffic uh, administration for a major traffic generator permit so the study was done in the format that they like to see um, so, so it's uh, maybe a bit larger than you're used to seeing anyway uh, the site's on the east side of King Street uh, north of Corporate Road and we have access as Matt said by, via Corporate Road and via another curb cut on King Street uh, located about a thousand feet uh, north of Corporate Road the two warehouse buildings and we prepared a traffic impact study dated uh, April 2018. And uh, a picture here, though. <laughs> based on, based, yep. What? What do you got? I was just pointing out the uh, driveways oh, okay. to the people in the crowd. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so based on uh, trip generation publication from the Institute of Transportation Engineers, we estimate the site will generate about 130 morning peak hour trips and about 125 afternoon peak hour trips. We looked at 11 intersections along the Route 5 corridor, which is pretty, pretty extensive, during the morning peak hour and the afternoon peak hour on a weekday. And uh, we found that they have adequate capacity to accommodate uh, our generated traffic. Uh, we have one little, little quirk at the proposed northerly site driveway, we do not have adequate sight distance along the road. Uh, so for left turns, we made safely out of the site. So we're prohibiting left turns out of the site at that driveway, and we've designed it. I don't know if you have a plan somewhere. We've designed it so left turns won't be made out of it. We're also proposing to add a southbound left turn lane on Route 5. Excuse me. We aren't seeing oh, what you're is. saying. Thank okay. you. Here it is. <laughs> you're talking and little, pointing. We have no idea what we're a little, A little delay? Thank you. It yeah. wasn't up at all. We just no. saw you. No, no. Oh, okay. There, uh, for your understanding, there's a TV in front of us. I, so I know that. So, but, but it was up here earlier than it was up there, I guess. Maybe it must have been a, yeah. a delay in cyberspace. Uh, so we've recommended uh, widening of King Street Route 5 to provide a left turn lane into the site. So anybody coming up down, coming down the hill, turning at the side of the Nordley driveway, uh, will will not have to worry about being rear-ended by through traffic. And uh, there may be some minor modifications at the corner of a corporate road to be able to accommodate large trucks. As as I mentioned, we'll have to go to the Office of State Traffic Administration, OSTA, for a major traffic generator application, uh, which we're prepared to do. And uh, I just want to mention one little quirk in the study. We completed a study in, in April of this year, and uh, at, at the time, the proposed casino down, down the street was kind of in limbo, and there was really no information available on the casino. As you know now, the casino is no longer in limbo, and they actually filed their state traffic administration application last week. We have their information. We have their plans. Fortunately, they, they don't expect to generate too much traffic heading up Route 5 towards our site, about 40 peak hour trips. We've, we've added those into our previous calculations, and it doesn't make any impact 
on our ability to get in and out of driveways. It does have a significant impact down at the Route 140 interchange, as you're probably aware, and that's another, another town. Maybe you don't care, maybe you do care, but the state will care anyway. But uh, I just want to indicate that we've, we've looked at the impact of the casino traffic on our specific driveways, and we're fine. Um, so if you have any questions, I'll, I'll be happy to answer. I do have a question because you're saying your morning traffic and your afternoon traffic is like 135. You've got these two buildings, and if I, I, I don't have, I don't remember where I put my notes, but I think I counted like 80 bays. So you've got 400 parking places and, and for cars and all that. I'm seeing a lot more traffic than what you're saying, especially early mornings with tractor trailers. I know how they run. I mean, they're going to come, go in. They want to get, go to their next stop, so they're going to be coming pretty much regularly during the morning hours, uh, leaving in the afternoons. I don't know what the warehouse is going to be distributing or receiving, but I'm thinking you're going to have more than this 130 or whatever it was in the morning. Well, it's, that's, yeah. that's 130 in, in the morning and afternoon peak hours. So yeah. dep depending on who the operator is and what they're doing, they, they may want their trucks on the road much earlier, or they may want their trucks on the road <coughs> later in the afternoon. Um, yeah. and, and then the other aspect is, even though there's, there are 80 bays for trucks, some of these trucks stay there for two or three days at a time. Some come in, some come out. The other aspect is uh, zoning requirements for parking don't necessarily relate in any way to traffic. And if you know the way the world is going now, for many of these warehouses, uh, they have a lot fewer people and a lot more robots. So, and uh, robots don't usually drive to work. So um, we've, we've, used, we've used data from the Institute of Transportation Engineers, trip generation. It's uh, standardized data. Everyone uses it. It's accepted uh, nationwide. It's the most uh, comprehensive source available. Sure. I have a, Thank a, you. a question about the traffic study. And, and forgive me if I didn't see it in the summary. but. Does the trips generated that's reflected in this traffic study, does it account for any differences between trips by a tractor trailer, which can be sort of clumsy and... Yes. It does? So, yeah. Can you so explain? So there's, there's a... Uh, deep, deep, buried, deep buried into the pages and pages of output, which nobody wants to read in the back, there, there's something called uh, percent heavy vehicles. And we change the percentage of heavy vehicles. So if you had, uh, you know, single family residents, it would be, we used like a standard 2% or 1%. If you have something like a warehouse, we, we'd increase the number of proportion of heavy vehicles, and then that's factored in into the analysis. So, so how would it, can you, can you explain like how it factors into the analysis? In other words, well, uh, based, on, based on the capacity manual, every heavy vehicle is essentially equivalent to two passenger cars. So if we had 100 heavy vehicles, essentially with the calculations would think of it as 200 cars. <laughs> the other thing to, to remember that uh, even during the, peak, during the peak hours, everyone thinks of, uh, of warehouses as being all trucks, and during the peak hours, it's, it's primarily employees. So the, no, the percentage of trucks in warehousing, depending on you know, who the operator is and what they're doing, somewhere between 10 and 30 percent during the morning and afternoon commuter peak hours of trucks. So it's not like it's 100 percent trucks. The, the, we take into consideration the fact that trucks use up more space and more capacity than passenger cars. Thank you. I have a question, and, and I see uh, the letter that we received mentions it as well. Your new, your new cut that's going to be about in the middle of the highest point in, well, in the middle of the rise in the road on Route 5 uh, is a dangerous spot. In fact, you pointed out the fact that the traffic coming south, uh, the trucks would have a very difficult time making a left turn because they wouldn't be able to see what's coming down the hill. Uh, I agree with that, and I don't know where you would put your your road uh, or your other exit, but I think that
It's a fallacy that you didn't take Old Depot Hill Road in account because if I was a trucker, I wouldn't want to go up to the intersection at the top of the, of the hill and wait for that light to make a left turn to go down to your project because uh, the brakes would have to be pretty good. I don't even like to go up that hill with my car and wait at that light to make a left turn uh, because of the, the way the traffic is. And with a GIS system, because we have trouble here in town of using some of our back roads, I would use Old Depot Hill Road from East Windsor and cut up and come and come south purposely to miss that hill. Well, we think I, I think some of the employees might do that because they come from anywhere and everywhere. But Truckers I think but I think most most of the trucks could be coming from 91, and if they're coming from the north, they're going to be get, getting off at that exit. What's 46? That's right. They, yeah. yeah. And they're coming down. If they come from the south, they'll be getting off. It's easier at, to make a right turn and go down the old Depot Hill Road than to make the hill. But that's up to them. They may not too. I don't know where they. Well, if they're, if they're coming from they're coming from Bridge Street. Right. They have to get up the little hill to get up to Route 5. Once they're on Route 5, it's not that bad. Uh, getting it to no, the side is fairly flat. No, they're up there, but yeah. that, that hill and the light making them stop right at the top it, it, it does make a problem for them. Uh, I drove, well, it was for Uncle Sam, uh, big trucks through the hills of Kentucky, and if I could miss a hill, I'd miss a hill. <laughs> a lot of the trucks actually use exit 44 instead of 45 because it uh, avoids the hill and it's more truck friendly you know big intersections oh, okay. stuff like now, that down by down by uh big walmart that yes yeah. yeah they come up that yeah. way well so uh, th things may change a lot once the casino is built and it's hard for us to kind of figure out what what might happen but well i know and, and the the other part is that area is a disaster if there's an accident on 91. It's total block. Yep. Totally. Okay. You don't move for quite a while, and that's all the way up, up to right here. So, um, every 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 town we work in that's long I ninety one or I eighty four or I ninety five, we hear the same story. Every time there's an accident, everybody gets off the highway and runs through town. Uh, or if you go down to Brantford and Guilford, every Sunday afternoon during the summer. 95 is backed up, and my answer is, okay. That's, I know, I know. Every weekday, 95 just, is backed up. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm I, just saying that the, there, there are problems. I live, I, live, uh, I live not far off the 91 card, I think 91 North going home from Meriden about, well, about, about two out of five, five nights a week, I have to get off the highway two exits earlier because there's not an accident out of my exit, there's an accident three exits further up, and it backs up traffic and I get off. That's just the way it is. I'm just the way it is. Is there no better location for your second exit than what in the middle of that hill? The only the only frontage that this property has are in the two locations that we're we're proposing driveways. There is a little bit uh, more frontage in between, but it would be. Uh, It'd be, be crossing a significant wetland and, and filling, which obviously we're not proposing to do. So corporate drive already is existing, so that's obviously a, a nice spot to extend from there. The only other exit uh, entrance is, is where we have it shown. It's a, it's a pretty unique lot if you go back and look at the existing plan of uh, a lot of fingers that come out and touch well, King I know Street. The last, pl the last uh, plan that we had, they came out on uh, the other street, but... On onto Mullen or yeah, I think it was Mullen Road that they yeah. Came th on. This property actually doesn't ab abut Mullen directly. Doesn't come in. Okay, somebody right. must Unfortunately, that would have been that would have been a great a great bleed off for Might for traffic. Yeah. Uh, I'd like to bring up uh, the architect to show some of the elevations. Obviously, Fred is not going anywhere. If you have any more questions that pop up, but well, I don't know. Anybody with any other? No, we're good for the moment. For the moment. Okay. You gonna man that? Yeah, sure. Hello, I'm Barbara Jocelyn. I'm a principal and a project architect at BL Companies. The project is um, actually. I don't think I really need to point. I think you guys can see it, and I. Does it point on there? You have it there. Sure. Okay. It's a 
large structures, as you can see. They're steel with precast envelopes. They are designed um, what is referred to currently as kind of Class A industrial space. The precast envelope is a, a nice, um, very high quality building. These particular buildings have been designed instead of just huge boxes, which they could be. Um, they have slight projections and relief built into the architecture so that they are will appear to be a little bit better than a big box. Uh, and that's what you see in the kind of the, the steps, which are really more of a, a slight recess to accentuate uh, the fact that it's not just a big, huge, flat facade. They are anticipated to be a neutral paint color with some uh, definition in it with, as we're showing, with kind of like some striping or some different uh, accent colors. Also to break it up, keep it from just being a big, huge box. There's, clearly we're not sure exactly who the tenants will be or the, the end users of this, so we've anticipated it's somewhere around 8 to 10% of this would be an office space use. That could fluctuate, but there's going to be some type of office space with them, and they would have uh, a storefront glass at that area to, to let in some natural light and to, to work that in. I'm not really sure what else I can tell you about this. <laughs> really big buildings that are industrial use. Do you have any questions? I read in here someplace that the uh, footprint is presently flexible. I'm looking at the map. What 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 do you what do you mean by that? The anticipated footprint for one of these is just over a hundred thousand and one is right around five hundred thousand. Uh, I you know I think the flexibility would be pretty minor in the dimensional changes at the end. I don't think it's anticipated they're going to go from dramatically different in either direction. And actually, I think there was something well, in here that said the that they were locked in and we were pulling that language. Yeah. I, I think that there, there's a language issue in something that was put in and that we, we will lock into that. I'm sorry? There's it's hard to hear you. Let me, let me just find where it says that. There's something in here that, that talks about that being an error, that we will lock in that square footage. Well, I, I hadn't seen it. I, I, there is new material here on my desk tonight, so it could be in there. Right. So the, the flex just ref refers to the combination of, of warehouse distribution use and the warehouse, the, the accessory it warehouse footprints, use. Though. And footprints means to me the... the uh, right, and I believe that's a, a note in your, your staff report about removing that language from our application just to to clarify the square Joe, footage is the square please. footage I'd like to see it, 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 where is it? the the new material for this application was just the staff report that i provided um to you so that's that was it was on your desk and sent but, in the uh, email. It's on my desk. I didn't. I can't read that. Does fast. the flexibility mean for the I clients? Read it, I haven't even seen it. Or is one going to take the whole building? Uh, there is no secure tenants at this time, so I guess it hypothetically could, you know, That's be a flexible space. Me. But yeah, at the at the moment, it's shown as a solid footprint with two uses. Flexible two uses in it. One thing, but yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, footprint is not yeah. yeah we're not intending to change the footprint at all we you know our approval is based on the square footage from inland wetland and obviously that's what we're showing you here tonight it's a little bit flexible because we don't know the tenant but the outside envelope is is defined uh, well I, I don't know what is that in oh, it hurts. Oh, this one staff report July 19th. Okay. We did receive the staff report um, from the fire marshal and from the planning department this this week. I can definitely walk through some of the comments we've had a chance to take a look at if you'd like to do that. Uh, that's up to the staff. I uh, I, I know it's I know it's problem. a big application. I just got the material <laughs> tonight and uh, <laughs> we we submitted this at the end of May. Yeah, we, we got it three days ago. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, some of this, uh, yeah, some of this we just got tonight. Fire district uh, reports and the rest of those from staff. Oh, there's some nice materials. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. It's, 
that's the type of material, I guess. What do you mean by storefront systems on the front of this? So the elevation where the where the office area would be or the built out office there would be there would be some storefront systems with glass just windows I mean you would want some natural light into places people were working in an office environment as opposed to a industrial. We all block walls. Are they planning on starting construction before they secure a tenant? I, I believe that if we received approval, we'd be waiting for uh, a tenant before before moving forward okay. uh, with construction. Obviously, um, if we received approval here, we would need to go to the DOT and OSTA, um, and we'd also have to go to uh, Army Corps for the, the wetlands uh, that we're filling in in select places. So there's quite a bit of permitting to, to go along with this project. So it wouldn't be an immediate turnaround, but they would be looking to find a tenant sooner rather than later. Okay, thank you. Do, do you need a cross easement with uh, the corporate or the whoever owns the, uh, and I don't know who owns it presently. I corporate believe drive. corporate road or corporate drive is a, is a town road. No? I don't think it is. No, they are. I think there was a gentleman that owned it that owned yeah, the Yeah, my name is Mark Fontaine. I'm the um, principal from DF Realty. We also own um, um, Land Executive Center at 1699 King Street, so we control the corporate road. Yep. And it is a private road. That's so, great. yes, there would have to be a cross easement. Right. So right now you have that as your entrance, but you don't have the rights to it yet to use it now mr fontaine owns both properties both properties so there would need be, there would need to be easement language between the two property owners but it's 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 himself okay he owns both okay yeah Solved that problem. well i know the gentleman that owned the property I, I don't know if he was the one that owned it last time uh owned the whole thing too at the time because he was making the development okay could you just refresh my memory because I don't have my <laughs> don't. bulk plan with me. I left it in the car. It was being a little weeny, but that's okay. <laughs> um, the distance from that uh, road to from the back of those houses on King Street. You, you mean you mean the, the driveway yeah, to, the, to King the the, to, to King Court to those properties on King Street. I think it, I can't remember. So you're talking about that the road, that second road that exits right. So as as it goes or as it goes around the flex right. building, right? So King Court between King Court, mm -hmm. pro, the back of their properties, right. and our driveway is a hundred feet. Okay, thank you. And that's a there's a, a natural buffer in there uh, that we're not proposing to cut down. We've also added some significant landscaping per inland wetlands feedback, and there's also a fence along that section as well. So the back of those residential properties are screened towards the back of our building. And one of the other modifications we made during inland wetlands is we moved the parking lot that was around this flex building to only on the side that's away from King Court. Another problem I, I'm seeing with it with her, goes with her question. With that being, that exit being so close to those houses and it's on an upgrade and you're using that uh, as an exit, with the trucks going up, there's be quite loud noises and vibrations for the, the, it's gonna be picking up with those houses. To me, you may end up with the type of problem we have with Manning Road again with, with the noise because the trucks I know are on the road really 24 hours. A trucker coming from another place and has a delivery here may pull in and, and stay. So he could be using that road and if he uses i don't know if he if they'll be using it going in but going down the grade 
if he uses his uh, Jake brakes, you got a problem too. Right. I mean, that's that was I think a concern that was brought up from residents that came to the inland wetland hearing, and that's why we added the addition of the natural buffer and the fence buffer as well to create as much possible um, separation and screening um, and a noise attenuation between us and the residents behind that. Obviously, the the back of the property to our driveway is 100 feet. The houses are actually set further back towards King Court, so there's an additional space there as well. But just from our property to the driveway is 100 feet. Okay, well, it, it could, and, and I know if they're pulling a load up there, you'll hear the exhaust a little bit more too, along with the, the brakes. So I just, it, it would be great if you could find another exit, but. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think that there is. And I know this property has been zoned industrial. I know over the years there has been applications to change the zone to multifamily residence and, and some variety, but the town has always stuck to their guns on wanting this to be industrial. And in the plan of conservation and development, it's also slated because it's one of the last big parcels in town to be industrial. So, um, unfortunately, the geometry of the site, it's, you know, it's limited to where we can it's put our put our uh, driveways just another uh, question about the trucks and and because they will be coming 24 hours because this is a big property that you're having all these docks um, will there be a place for the truckers that come in and may have to wait a couple of hours so that they don't have to park on any of these driveways a parking area or will there be signage on these driveways to say no parking um, leading them to another place because sometimes they do queue up to be unloaded or to be loaded and they're going to be running um, especially in the winter they don't want to shut them down right. so i'm just thinking that if somebody shows up at three o'clock in the morning and they have a <laughs> scheduled time of being loaded or unloaded at eight o'clock they're gonna pull over someplace, take a nap until their time. So right, understood. Yeah, so I mean, obviously we have a lot of trailer dock spaces and also trailer spaces that are not adjacent to buildings for, for stacking and for, or for waiting, but also the depth of this lot, these driveways are extremely long, so there's natural <laughs> queuing on this property. So nothing has to be, um, queued in route five that's obviously nobody wants that we don't asking about yeah. <laughs> on queuing on route five i'm talking about these Enter these the enters and exit roads because they have time to kill waiting right we think that's all accommodated on site in these parking lots and in these trailer spaces yeah. are, yep. are there going to be any signage on those driveways in the property saying no parking currently we do not have any signage prohibiting parking in any driveways that lead to our parking lots and, and, and trailer docks. I don't think the, the roads that come into this to, to minimize the impervious, we, yeah, okay. Um, the, the width of these drive aisles now, you know, wouldn't allow someone to, to park up and, and sleep for an hour. I think so. Right. Yeah, know. Um, you know, three o'clock in if, the morning, <laughs> I'm tired, I'm just sure. gonna pull over. Sure, so um, we wouldn't be opposed to, to placing signs along the driveways to, to keep them off those areas. Directing them to, directing to, them the to certain area. areas to, yeah. if, if there was a, a log jam in unloading or, or, or something to that nature. Because I know that a lot of these um, warehouses give times to their to the truckers. You know, this is your appointment time to be loaded or unloaded. So I show up at three o'clock in the morning because I just came from wherever and my appointment's for eight o'clock. What are you gonna do? Right. Right. Where Understood. can I wait? Yep. Thank you. Another noise problem with trucks is if they're refrigerated, mm -hmm. they have to stay running. Yeah. So if you have some company that needs refrigerated devices, so all those trucks are going to have keep their chillers going. They still have to keep their motor running. Right. So we can we can designate some some spots and some signage to keep uh, anything that would have to be running or waiting away from you know the main main intersections right. back to King Street and and the especially the residential um, abutters in, on King Court. 
I have a quick question about the fire department's letter. Um, I know you talked about the buildings being sprinkled, and I think you mentioned this earlier in the meeting, but I just want to confirm. Did you have an updated plan, or did you, I guess, satisfy the fire department that you'd have the hydrant locations and all that? Yeah, so um, the utility plan is included in that set. Um, there's an extensive network of water mains and fire hydrants distributed all throughout the site and around the building. Um, the I May got set? What? The May, the May submission? Yes. Because I guess I'm confused then that the fire department said that there wasn't. I, I completely agree with you. I don't know if he flipped to that page or didn't see it, but I got that comment on Tuesday. Uh, we have fire hydrants and water mains around the entire property for fire access. Um, so it is available. It's always been on the plan. I'm not sure if he missed it. Uh, I didn't get a chance to speak with him directly. Yeah, he did receive a copy of the plans to review. So, I mean, they're 99 pages. He could have missed it. Um, yeah. I guess I'm, utility I'm happy to work with him to show him exactly where all that stuff is to coordinate. I know they like to uh, space things per their procedures around certain buildings and entrances. So um, there's a lot on there, but I can, I can sure uh, coordinate with him to the specifics that he likes. Okay. Jen, I have a question, I guess, for you. Uh, can we control material that's to be stored or delivered or uh, placed in these buildings? I, I'm just concerned uh, certain chemicals or salts or whatever. This is, uh, this is a lot of water and you have a ma major brook in there. <laughs> what, how can we control what may be stored or kept in these warehouses? Um, I believe that that is something you can look at under this because it's a special permit um, review, but I can double check that with the town attorney if you want. Yeah, um, I would refer. The aquifer. I'm sorry? Aquifer protection? Well, yeah, but. This isn't uh, in an aquifer protection we, zone. He's not in an aquifer zone, but uh, water pollution the water pollution and you got brooks, that, uh, the brooks flow directly into the Connecticut River. Uh, they go under 90, they go under Route 5 there and down, oh, I forget the, uh, mm -hmm. they changed the name of the store. <laughs> well, water pollution control. But anyway, the, the, there's a lot of moisture down in there. Yeah, Burlington. Yeah, oh, Bur yeah, Burlington Coat. And I know there was a problem before because uh, the person that lived on that side, on the west side of the, Route 5, his land was getting eroded back there. We couldn't do anything. I think that was dealing with the high school. Mm. With Crack, we had a problem with the water flowing down through there, which is a little bit different. But th those brooks, anyway, that's, yeah, I would like to find out what control we can have on the type of material or chemicals or whatever may go in there. Okay. Yeah, I've seen conditions of approval in the past, but I, I can definitely ask the town attorney because um, if that's something that you no can No matter say. what it is, if you get down the soil and, and you, you, don't want, you don't want it to mix with the water. Right, and also this was extensively reviewed by Inland Wetlands is the whole stormwater management system that we have on the property. Well, that may be fine, but I don't see right. that they dealt with any chemicals that may be stored there. There was there was a discussion, Virginia, I'm not sure if you remember this because I wasn't a part of that the, this project during that, that part, but there was discussion about limiting some of the uses like truck washing, car washing, and some of that nature as well because of similar concerns by um, your board and, and, and Mr. O'Brien at the time. Yeah. Well, That's we we have the authority to do it too so well they, uh, the um, storage because I, I, yes i'd like to know the legal because it, it would sort of limit them too i i, I don't know uh, what you could bring in there i would guess right, i think a lot of that is also controlled by building code as well and, and storing of uh, safety right, storing of stuff and uh, uh, of fire fire codes well yeah and combustibles with a fire code I'm concerned about whatever gets into the water. Water pollution control. That's it could a sewer. require filters and stuff. That's like a that. sewer, yeah. Not, not for outside if the truck no, for the inside truck the breaks floor up. drains too. You can do well, there shouldn't be any floor drains. Well, I don't know if there is. Yeah, all the, all the truck docks are exterior to the building. 
the stormwater management system has catch basins with hoods and sumps. There's hydrodynamic separators, which separate out sand, grit, oil, that, that type of thing. That's been vetted very heavily, obviously, throughout this process. So um, any exterior stormwater that's picking up anything from the parking lot from cars and trucks will be treated per town and, and state standards. That's if we do things right, but sometimes they don't, don't always work. I'd just like to know what we can, if we can control what's stored. Our Army engineers may do it to themselves, I don't know. But yes, please just check. Thank you. Anyone else? Are they open it to the public? Very well, I don't know. Are you, are, if you're done, not done, I'll open it to the public. Anyone in the public would like to speak in favor or against this application? There's a letter. Yes, please. Against. Yeah, there is a letter against. Let me see for first. This is from uh, Karen Ainsworth. Uh, we received a letter yeah, with pictures and. That was on our desk tonight. The rest of the material that we received tonight, I didn't. Re I haven't had a chance to look at. I don't think we can. Welcome, please name and address. Maureen Mullen, 1625 King Street. I'm beginning to feel like uh, the fellow who had chickens down near the Travelers Insurance Company, <laughs> being impacted by the people who are coming into the area. I'm not speaking for or against. I'm not doing that. I just have questions. Just hold the microphone down so we can hear you. Okay. okay. Well, I don't know. <coughs> Talk louder. Go ahead. I'll try. I'm not saying anything for or against. I just have questions that I wish to know about. Unfortunately, I couldn't make it to the wetlands meeting, and maybe one of those would have answered. My concern is about um, Mullen Road and the drainage from our property, which is on the north side of Mullen Road. We have 25 acres that would be adjacent to the property that the land trust acquired from Creck so that um, they could drain their soil and all. At this time, our property drains to the south through ditches and I want to know if any of the um, land where they're going to be building is going to be higher so that that's going to impact the flow of water as it is now going south, going south into um, the brooks where it goes now. That was my concern. Okay, and the other question would be again about traffic. As it exists now, it's very busy on Route 5. We have trucks running 24-7 from the uh, mulch and bark uh, outlets there on Mullen Road. And I have to say, during the night, they try to be very quiet. Their owner has spoken to them and said he doesn't want to hear any, any problems and all, and they've been very, very cooperative when they're running. I hear them, but they're not loud. They're not obnoxious. We don't hear those brakes that make all the noise. So I would ask that if there were going to be trucks going north, and my guess is that will happen at times, that they also be instructed to try to be quiet in the neighborhood over the nighttime hours and early morning so that people can get some sleep. That would be very helpful. Um, we also have a lot of school buses that are running to the new Crack School. And also, could the truckers be warned and the people who are going to work about the number of buses and the impact that that has on the area? It's a very significant number. I was wondering, too, about what would be stored in the buildings. I know when there was a nursery that wanted to expand some services on South Road, there were several meetings about the chemicals that might be used for various um, procedures, services, and all, and that had to be very carefully checked, and also cleaning their equipment and all. I know that the group here was very concerned about all of those things going on, so I was glad to hear that you're thinking about that tonight. At the moment, I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Anyone else would like to speak in favor or against? Uh, Jen, what's, what's the timing on this? Uh, well, the public hearing is open as of today, so you have 35 days to close the public hearing. I believe that, again, puts you in August. We need to get an extension, unless you want to schedule a special meeting or... Well... If you wanted to continue it. <laughs> open the public yeah. hearing. Like we have, did that, so that's it seems right. like we have questions that we, they're going to come back on, so it seems like an extension tonight would yeah. be a good idea. I, yeah, if the uh, applicant will give us an extension. The opening was here. Well, does he have the right to give the extension? Do you, do, who's the representative? Well, are you the applicant? Yes. Okay. What, what we're asking for is an extension of time. Well, there's uh, paperwork that no, we'll ask you to sign, sir. I guess that would be to the the next regular meeting on September 6th. Yeah, but mm -hmm. he's got to sign the yeah, paper I'm first. Yeah, just clarifying when that would be. Oh. In case he had a question. Okay. <coughs> they have the paperwork there. Yeah, what, yeah, what, no, I, that's fine. What I'm saying it's fine. We, we will agree to the extension. But you have to sign the paperwork. Uh, okay, you he would like you to do it now is what he's yes. saying. <laughs> Actually, they didn't even have to start until August. They didn't even have to start until August. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's way into September easily. Yeah, okay. Well, there's something else I was going to ask. I forget a little bit. Any further questions or any anything else if anybody thought of? Okay, so we're all set with that on the extension. And the date will be the, uh, what, 6th? September 6th, yes. It says on the agenda. Can, okay. we res can we respond to the public's concern, those th sure. three questions, yes. just, just right. while it's fresh in everyone's mind? Right, yeah. Hi, my name is Jessica Bates. I'm a senior civil engineer with uh, BL Companies in Hartford, Connecticut. I'm call I'm I'm going to talk to the um, concerns the the woman raised regarding the drainage right. and the culverts and cross culverts and everything. All of the drainage um, patterns and conveyance capabilities of the existing site are still there in the proposed site. We're not changing any sort of conveyance. There's a big, large wetland system down through the middle of the site that um, we're crossing with one culvert. That culvert is sized for the B DOT drainage manual, so it will handle a storm well in excess of anything that you know we're going to see. And it will have an openness ratio for the Army Corps of Engineers for, um, for mitigation or for um, critter crossings yeah, I, I, and things like that. So, and all of the other um, wetland crossings are areas in which we're, we're segmenting um, stormwater that would travel from the north to the south through our site has been designed to continue to maintain the flow from the same existing conditions as the proposed. I saw you were even taking care of the little animals that were going <laughs> Everyone's taken care of. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, her other concerns in terms of traffic, obviously, I think that was... Um, pretty clear in our uh, traffic study that the uh, you know adjacent roadways and intersections have adequate capacity for um, this proposed use. I'm sure whoever the tenant will be in the future, which obviously isn't known at this time, will be giving instructions to, for them to be a good neighbor in terms of watching out for school buses and, and traffic and keeping quiet in off hour times. Um, and again, we don't know what will be stored in the building since the tenants uh, aren't known at this time. So I, th I think those are the three questions that she had. Right. Just one more, Jen. Jen if if uh, they don't know the uh, the person that would be coming coming in, do, would they have to come back for any reason? Um, well, you're approving the uses in those buildings. Um, so if they wanted to expand the uses to include Just something expand. different, they but would. Have but to. not of who who's coming in, not 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 the use. Right. So it's it's being under your review. You're looking at it as a um, a warehouse slash office space. I know they call it flex, but 
it's I mean your regulations don't really uh, okay. provide for flex so it's warehouse and office in that building that you're okay, approving so right we now wouldn't, so, yeah office. hazardous materials it would be the fire department in the well, that's what we'd have to go. Well, hazardous, yeah, but I'm I believe we'd only have to come back if we were not going to be using that designation, right? Right. So if, if you we change it to a restaurant, we'd have to come back, yeah, right, right? right? But yeah, but I, as long I, as the tenant is a yeah. distribution warehouse office yeah. user, then that covers an but approval we could be get. A manufacturing plant. That's yeah. Something. Right. If it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. No, I'm just looking to to protect the groundwater. That's all. Okay. Thank you. That's thanks. Anything else? That it? That's it. So, motion to continue. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to continue public hearing 2918 to our next regular meeting on September 6th with the applicant's consent. Second. Okay. Motion's made and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you, guys. Appreciate well, it. Thank you. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Amazing how things go if they do their homework. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, right. I just, it's just a lot of stuff. Now, again, if you're going, you want to, just take those, those books or, that are on either end, if you think you need them. And uh, I didn't bring in my maps. I left it at home. I'm not going to carry no, those. In fact, you are, she's not going to get them back. Because <laughs> they're going to the trash. Okay, any other business? Jim? Yes. Um, I believe you received a memo from Rick Can't regarding. You. I believe you received a memo from uh, Rick regarding Karis Reels. Right, um, I was going to mention that. Okay. I don't know if you. Go ahead. <laughs> Are we. Did you want to do Director of Planning's report now or? Yeah. Uh, Are you you're on other business, so I guess. Okay, just uh, other business. Rick's report you got on Karis Reels, and he'd been trying to work with them on one thing, and come to find out, I guess they hadn't notified him that they didn't need that switch, that they were going to uh, bury the tank or whatever it is, they're they're staying, and uh, wasn't going to be above ground. So he doesn't need to do it. We don't need to do anything. That's basically it. Okay. Now, any other uh, any other commissioners' correspondence? Any problems around uh, town? Just one. Uh, cars, Route Five, on the grass, Ardiolis. I believe. Yeah, I believe Rick is already aware of that. <laughs> and they kind of grow on the grass. I, All the I time. didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Where cars came from. Now I do. They grow up on the grass. <laughs> I had a, quick... a lot of rain lately. Yeah, so. I guess so. They're popping up. <laughs> I had a quick question. Um, did Leah come in for the for permit um, in the office for um, the big festival they're throwing this weekend with uh, music and all that stuff? Uh, hmm? Nope, not that. Nope, we have. We were not aware that there was that's a festival <laughs> in the office. That's why I asked because it's. I have seen it. It's advertised. Yeah. Well, it's a Rick whole over weekend that they're, uh, the car dealers are doing for veterans. Uh, it, only Leah advertised. Okay, and they're going to well, have music and food. I'm, I know there's different places yeah. that they're doing this for. They still need to yeah. come in and, and apply. I didn't know that it was Leah that was yeah. doing it. Staff, staff signs off on those all the time. Yeah, they're Can, supposed to. Yeah, that's why I asked. Do you, do you know where it's advertised? Where did I or see? If you it? can send us something so that we um, have it, I will. I will look and see if I can find it for you. It's okay. got to be like one of the newspapers, I'm guessing, but okay. I will find. And it it's this weekend, yeah? like this. Yeah. Like oh, I know. The I, day I, I'll, I'll send it to you. There. Okay. Where, where? So you'd have to act on it tomorrow to get them in and get permits. It was on my Facebook page. What was the solution the to the activities. their trees that they were going to take care of? The. The, the trees, trees along that they the street. The, uh, we're going to replant because they, they were on our property. I mean, they, yeah. I they think, weren't. I don't think they're trees. Yeah. I think that they were just not going to trim them back anymore. I've driven over there and I don't think they are trimming those trees back anymore. <laughs> they planted <laughs> new ones. I thought they were going to. They, yeah. they well, filled if they're in. short yeah. to the ground, they kind of got to do something with them. They, we, they filled in and they look okay. 
No. We do? All right. I, I, that's, that's okay. So, yeah, we can. I can double check the file again. Um, You're but. talking about close to the uh, street line. Yeah, 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 they were town. Yeah, they they, they greened up trees. and they look okay. Well, I can understand why they don't like trees around their displays, but. Okay, anything else? Um, oh. It's just uh, actually staff could drive down that street every day because they always got those banners, they're waving banners out, and I don't know how you control those. They just yeah. put them out there when you weren't around and it always used to be put them out on Friday night because everybody's gone home for the weekend. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Drive by with a flamethrower. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Lighter box. Uh, <laughs> director of planning. <laughs> um, so I'm um, coming back to you guys about the uh, proposed flea market or re retail sales. <laughs> for multiple vendors in the uh, former Crown Furniture space. Um, I know you guys said that you would be open to accepting an application so you get more information on it. Um, the applicant uh, does not know if he would be able to, um, or if, it, if he, he basically just wants to know if you guys can have a special meeting in August for him. He has some concerns with um, the lease being able to be held for him until uh, September and then it would take him apparently a month to get vendors if he were to be approved and then he wouldn't apparently be able to open until December so I said that I would ask you guys if you would be open to that um, we do have a few other um, smaller public hearings that That's have um, applications that have come in to the office too so um, we would be able to move those along as well if you would be open to it um, again, I, I just, I said I would do my due diligence and ask. <laughs> it's ultimately up to you guys. You have a very soft voice, and um, you know, it's very hard to understand you, so. Okay. I guess over here it sounds louder. The guy that's <laughs> doing the, uh, uh, the, that wants to do the flea market, or whatever you, you, want, you want to call it, wants okay, to have a special right. meeting because he wants to talk to us. And uh, no. I already told what I thought he to her because she was. We discussed we it on the phone. We don't allow And I said, flea ask markets. the other six. Or, or yep. ask the crew we don't allow flea because, markets. We well, I, don't I know, know what he wants. He right. needs to come before us, not in a special meeting. He has to give us an application with a narrative, what his plan is. I mean, we ask that from everybody else that comes in front of us. I don't know why he thinks that we should just, but if he wants to go with an application and present it yeah, at our September, September meeting, that's fine. <laughs> that's what I told you. Okay. We are responsible because he loses a um, lease. Or somebody that, while we're talking about what we want, um, and I, I feel bad because staff gets beat up, people insist that they take things and they're not right. Um, we used to have a there used to be a policy that if it was on the table, it wasn't discussed. That's what I'm telling and you. And so um, I think that the people bringing applications is, need to know that if it's not complete and you send it out, the rest of the stuff, even if you email it to us, because we don't always look at it. Um, I'm telling you, you uh, to me, the emailing of stuff is, well, it's legal if you got a copy of it, but I don't run a machine. And, we're volunteers. I don't think we should be buying paper to run for the town, for one thing. You're already giving a lot of time. Well, and look at the time it takes. And it takes me double time if I'm going to review something and I have to double review it. If I can read, sit down and do a project at a time. Unless it's something I ask for, naturally, that, that's, that's a different situation. But they should be prepared. And the problem is, like like tonight, and, and it's not staff's fault. They are understaffed up there, and it, it's the fault of the town not giving us the staff to handle it. But that's uh, nothing we can do about it. But to send it down, and we get piles of paper on the desk. There was a period of time we got no paper on the desk at night, and that was a standard procedure. If there was one piece of paper there. 
that we didn't talk, we continued the hearing. Yeah. Uh, again, I. Um, and it's not your fault. I please. It's the, yeah. The 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 application materials. I know that I I we don't normally like to to do that and um to leave them at your desk because it's it's not fair to have you reviewing things on the fly. But um, the things that we provided were for um, public hearings that were going to like run out of time. So so we sort of. And you guys don't meet in August, it's sort of. Oh, I know. I guess what I'm trying to say is we wouldn't normally be trying to do that to to leave you with stuff at the no, desk. But some of those we we've agree been playing that with for quite going a while. forward, unless it's out of time, unless we're out of time, that we don't get this stuff on the table. Well, we shouldn't start the time. We shouldn't open the hearing. With, uh, with, uh, that's the problem. I guess the two things that we heard tonight, for which there were. Things that well, there were three things. One related to this Zero King Street, but the other two were for public hearings that were already open, that were set to expire either tonight or by the by August, which we in which we weren't weren't going to have a public meeting. Mm -hmm. And I, from what I hear from Janet, they don't want to do it. They they not, they don't. And this is it, well, it happened, and we're we're avoiding they it going their forward. Stuff together yeah. earlier. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's a problem, if and we, then it's our problem because yeah. they they wanted it built last week or they want to build it yeah if we give Jen the clear marching orders other than emergency like got up got a close tonight and this just came in and we've been waiting for it if Jen can tell the people uh, if you if you give us anything else it'll be continued to the next meeting well it's standard right we'll, well open it I know I you know, know. It, it's supposed it's to be standard, hard on staff but it's it's staff we don't have staff but here's the other situation. Roger set that precedent when he was here. He would give us things on our table. And well, he so, was right, told but the he's same not thing. here anymore. Right. Yeah. And before and so, Roger, nobody right. did. So Jen is doing the best she can. Oh, no, that's right. That's no, why I it, say it's this not is the, no it's reflection not, on Jen. I feel bad. bad. I just know that Charlie is always saying, you know, we just got this at our table. And before, it was policy that if it was the applicant was told if you want to put this on the table you have to you know they won't make a decision that that's right. Right. it made it easier on staff that's, right. that's I, all i'm I, trying i understand what you're saying yeah but, you know, they do a stellar we, job i'm just saying this has been happening ever since i've been on this right. board yes. because we tried it to, to accommodate the people and, right. and they know it but, but that's they're now given a timeline, aren't they, Jen? You know, yeah, like how long it will take and right. what they need to do. Yeah. So it's, it's all, right. all on the house, them. But they don't mm -hmm. So it shouldn't house, fall back. Right. Yeah. I don't think you know what to read. No, it's not at that. <laughs> but okay. But like the there's um, there's the one solar panel thing. Those guys been jerking around for two months now with not giving us what we asked for. So, there was three garage doors they cut in a wall. No. But the thing okay. is... Okay. All right. Well, all right, but now there's people in the audience. Is, is somebody just came in and sat down. Is he? No? Okay. Um, there's one other um, item that there is a... Re, uh, someone who came from uh, 319 Hazard Avenue. There's It's a shopping center that had a restaurant, a subway, and there's Kim's Nails in there. Um, it's obviously a three tenant space. One tenant moved out, and Kim's Nails would like to um, move their space to um, include that vacant space. So basically, taking a three tenant building and making it a two tenant building. That's a change to um, that property, technically. So um, they filed a building permit, and uh, Rick didn't feel comfortable just signing signing it just because it's um, interior renovations all they would be doing is putting in new chairs and um, stuff for doing nails so you're asking for administrative um, approval the thing is we don't really have any information would you I guess want them to file a formal um, application or give us materials for an administrative approval I guess yeah, I, if it's just a, they're taking a, a just moving into the to build well to, to making uh well it seems like they would just knock out space. Like a space no nope. yeah two yeah. yeah that's yeah. Knock out so the that's all they're doing yeah. 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 Right. yeah yeah they're they're just taking a wall down administrative so. approvals yeah. all in favor 
Oh, did you want to actually Dave, do a it. motion for I'll make a motion or? to administratively <laughs> approve what you've described. Yeah. Second. <laughs> Okay, no, that's voted, so it's yeah. they made a motion. Okay, now well, let's vote. All in favor? Good. It's you, the other ones. Thank you. <laughs> um, other than that, we have a few other public hearings um, that came in. Um, one for a second driveway cut, um, and um, also the village is refiled. I don't know if I mentioned that last week. Um, so we'll be getting that stuff out to you probably in August. Um, for your September meetings, but that's what's coming down. Now, has Villages got everything that the staff asked for? Because uh, I remember Kenny was very specific on what he wanted, and so wasn't Rich. We have to, I have to comb through it. Um, I'm going to end up writing a list of everything that was in the old record for you guys so that you know what's there. Um, I don't know what information you all still have. This is another one that's played out for, well, it's been years, years. because <laughs> the, the judge ordered it back to us and then they just didn't bring it back. So I. Yep. So I have to review the minutes and the video probably to see what you guys had originally asked for compare it to what they gave to us. Um, I'll obviously write a report. I know for you. That's, oh boy. <laughs> we have the ART. I know you had asked for the ART notes that we, we held an ART. Um, Tell them you're going to have Pam sort it out for you. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my, my question, I think it's the same question as last time, which is, I, I guess what I'm asking is for you to satisfy yourself that if they're saying we'd like them to consider everything that was discussed at the last yeah. meeting and everything that was discussed three years ago um i'd like to i think a list that you're talking about Summary is, is very important but also for us to consider things that happened in the past how, how what are we being asked to consider the content of all public hearings on all prior versions of this um every document that's been submitted in support like really I'd, I'd like to know exactly what we're being asked to consider if it's the content of public hearings is it that we're being asked to review tapes and make sure that everyone on the commission no, he basically hears and sees everything? Said we had to hear it again. Right. So that said that we had to have a new hearing. A new hearing. A new hearing. Yeah. But what we had discussed at the last hearing on yeah. it was we would just incorporate everything else in the past by reference, and then everyone, every one of us would just know what happened yeah, all those I know, other times. I know, I know. And what I'm asking even for is, there, but know. even then, the, it, it is cha <laughs> they've changed things sure. since the last <laughs> hearing. I mean, so you aren't rehearing the original. Oh, application. I know that. I don't want to hear the original. No. Because that went no. to court, and that has nothing to do with their new application. Right. It's new. new that's what I want to okay, hear. So and I that's think it. Okay. The confusion so. here is that the public hearing from like, I think it was two years ago, or however many years ago, that's not being reviewed. The record, I believe, it, that. It's past time. Was it yeah, that that's totally right, different. This past, yeah, I believe yeah. at okay. um, in during before they withdrew their application this year, um, they, I guess that you guys wanted to incorporate that record into the record for when they came back. So right. now they refiled. So that is what I'm going to make a list on. Thank you. Of what uh, uh, was originally part of that new, record. <laughs> like I guess what I'm wondering though is for us. change was so. He's easier to work with. Oh, he is easier. What I'm wondering, though, is for Paul us Smith. to later vote on that, um, does that mean that we all say, yes, I've, re I've reviewed or we've reviewed all of the hearings and on the last iteration of this? No. And, no? no. Well, I'm, I'm asking what that, what that means for us. If, if we're incorporating it by reference, how do I know that I've incorporated it into this reference so I can understand what I'm considering? Yep. So I know which it it is. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and if it's... If it's anything, how do I review? How do I know that I've reviewed it? They'll tell us yeah. again. And so I, you, so I know you're I'll making make the a list, list and I'll, we're probably just going to end up giving you the materials again that were part of that, so that you every we know that everyone has everything that's in the record. Yeah. They're, you're all looking at the same but thing. They're going to have to testify about the whole thing again mm -hmm. because it's a new hearing. Okay. Mm -hmm. No jerking <laughs> around with it. It's <laughs> a new hearing. We don't want to. I, 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 I hope we can. We give said and she said and all that. We don't want to hear that. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, nope. That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I make a motion wait, to adjourn. Wait, wait, wait a minute. There's people out there. I don't know if they want Second. to say anything. No. Okay. Anybody have anything to say? All right. Go ahead. Nope. No, I'm sorry. It's been made. Wait, motion's second. made. Oh, second. second. Okay. All in favor? 
good. See ya. Now, do you have to, you want, you want him to sign, John? What do I got to sign?